Elim's done for the day. We now hop into the winner matches and we kick off with Poppy Paul versus Anatand. My series at Litter that I have dubbed to be the best series you will see the entire group stage. I do not know about that, KP. The standards were set so high by yesterday's series that I really don't know if this is going to be the best series. But I feel like this is one of the most hyped up series of the group stage for sure, because we're looking at two players that are really in their prime right now. Poppy Paul, an absolutely monstrous performance in the opening weekend of this event. He took out three, Recon 3-0. But I think what's even more impressive is Anatant completely annihilating Vortex in the first week. 3-0 lead, or 3-0 win, I should say there. So really, both of these players have yet to lose a single game in the main event of this tournament. It's going to be the battle of the undefeated Anathan now representing a brand new team as well, my insanity. A lot of stories to talk about here. And really, this is one of those matchups that are between two extremely powerful players in this event, but it's not your classic big name. So that's why this matchup is so, so intriguing for many. And it, it now poses a different kind of question, does it, right? Like, we've seen two forms of Vortex. The one that just dominated 3-0 and the one that basically needed a safe word he was getting dominated so hard the previous weekend. So the question then becomes, was Vortex just not warmed up? Was Recon just out of touch? Or is Anatand elevated to an entire new level of Age of Empires 4 than anything we've seen out of him so far? This is the test. This is when we decide it because Puppy Paul right now is a podium level finish player. I don't think anyone would be surprised if he's top three for the next three tournaments where he's been playing. If Anatand of my insanity can get a win here against Puppy Paul, the moon is the limit. So let's get to it. Game one on your screens. We start off on a traditional one. Hillendale, Anatand with the old school HRE and Puppy Paul being the new Gen Zuma. He takes to the Byzantines. And, you know, KP, this is going to be a super hype matchup over here. A classic map to open with before we get into the more chaotic maps that uh, will be coming later this series. I just want to highlight one small thing about um, Anatand over here going into this series. You highlighted that he took Vortex out 3-0 last week. We don't know if this was Vortex having a bad day or Anatan having an impressive day, potentially the combination of both. But now his skills will be put to a test. And um, just for reference, Papi Paul, he was second in his group in the previous tournament, Elite Classic. He actually tied Marine Lord for set wins. And Anatan barely missed the actual top eight. He actually lost on a tiebreaker with B in that event. So even in Elite Classic, uh, Anathan was in the upper 50% of players, but he seems to have elevated his gameplay going into Masters of Rare Arms. And as you kind of highlighted, this is going to be his true test to see if he's able to match up against one of the hottest players in AoE 4 right now. And Anathan, you know, he's starting to deliver. We've seen it in some of the smaller tournaments just outside the EGC class tournaments where Anathan's able to get one, maybe two games off of Wham or Puppy Paw. I think there was even a tournament where he was able to beat one of the bros then lost the other one right afterwards. Um, but then on top of that, I know Anathan, he's been doing some play all 16 practices with Puppy Paw. Results of that actually was surprisingly close. It was a 10-6 scoreline in the end, which obviously still a win for Puppy Paul, but I think a lot of people just a few months back wouldn't have anticipated Anatan getting more than two games there. Puppy Paul's been so on fire. So should be an exciting one, especially when we get to kick off with the old Roman Empire versus the new Roman Empire here. We have seen a few Byzantine picks here on Hill and Dale. And I gotta say, every time I see them here, I kind of look at the outcome and feel like they would have been better used in a different map. It's an interesting idea. I'm not necessarily against the Byzantines here on this map, though, because one thing it does is that it kind of throws the meta off. And we've seen some epic failures from Byzantines. We've seen some decent success as well from them. I'm not necessarily against uh, the Byzantines on this map. I kind of missed most of the draft here uh, before the game. We didn't have much <laughs> of a discussion of that. So I think it remains to be seen whether this was indeed the best pick for this map or whether there was a better opportunity to put Byzantines to good use. But I'm not necessarily against this civilization over here. If for nothing else, it's for the fact that it's a little off-meta, so it makes uh, Poppy Paw's approach here a little less predictable. 
Yeah, and the Tan does something kind of interesting as well. He plays a lot of HRE. I think everyone does at this point. Um, at this point, you just can't be shamed about it because you're a pro player. He does this double scout opening quite a lot. And I thought that this would be a good game for that. Because this matchup, the thing that tends to give Byzantines an edge is in the castle race. It's the production of units at the beginning of the age. The Varangian spam is strong in this bad one, right? Like with the system effect, they're very hard to match. The solution for HRE is meant to be Burgrave, but to do Burgrave justice, you kind of need to have a lot of sheep or bare minimum, not have that happen. Puppy paw nerfs on the deer to make sure that Anatan cannot get it all in range of the Arkin. And this is big here because sure enough, you could still mill this, but the whole concept of uh, having those, having that deer pack out there is that you can push it in under your town center, or in this case, under the Arkin Chapel. Now that those uh, deer have been killed, the only way that Anathan can actually buff those villagers working there would be to drop a mill and then essentially make a separate product to buff those villagers with. Yeah, I didn't like the sound of any of that. I'm HRE and I like Fast Castle. Yes, hmm. it's it's definitely minimal effort from Puppy Paw, but it causes a lot of headache for Anathan. Yeah, because any small difference to the timing of your build is critical here, right? Because there's the difference between Puppy Paw having a blocker in place. It's especially scary in this matchup because Lombos, right? You know, Lombos are naturally going to come in here. And I wouldn't be surprised if it is just Lombos, considering you know, the, the very powerful thing for the Byzantines there is Lancenect. It's kind of crazy to me, actually, that HRE, the OG Lansk series, uh, Civ rather, is the worst Civ at building Lansk out of all the ones that can do it. And it's, uh, it's just the way it is, you know, you're the OG civilization and uh, the new fancy sips come out, fancy bonuses, some buffs as well eventually, and then you're just left behind and uh, hoping for a buff. But hey, <laughs> there's got to be a straight fast castle here from Anathan. Yep. He is uh, investing a little into farms as well. Hasn't yet touched a deer though. Um, on the other side, it looks like we're going to oh. have early mercenaries coming out from Bobby. Oh, that is intriguing. So he's going for the Kashiks. Oh, I've seen this kind of build before. It, this build works a lot better against two TC sieves because the whole idea is like against a Roost player, you can actually get your first Keshix onto them when they're building the high trade house. It doesn't really work that well against HRE because you have to dive the TC and you're going to arrive too late with the first Keshix anyway. Much better choice is what Puff is doing here. He's going to warn the relics and the Keshix should simply camp the remaining ones. Yep. To be fair, that's probably the reason why he's adding those um, those Kashyyyks himself. Yeah. Um, when you look at his resources, he also wants to go into Castle Age. He actually took his time to get Wheelbarrow, though, so that's a nice little buff to his eco. But he's not going to be lacking behind that much in Castle Age timing, and he does have all the map control he needs to make sure that his opponent will not pick up those relics. This is important. We need to check Anatan and um, what he's doing. I think his scout is just a home right now, right? That's bad. He needs to scout the Kashyyyks, because if he does that, he can make an informed choice. If he doesn't... Okay, <laughs> the one deer that survived. Not any longer. But yeah, the bigger deal here than the funny little play with the deer is that if Anatan doesn't read this play and builds the stables, he's going to struggle to get relics. If he yep. sees it and builds a Rax, this could still be a two, if not a three relic game for the HRE. Yeah, th th this is weird. He's going to open with a stable, which is normally fine. But again, the concern that you highlighted is that He's not using the scout to get vision and get information. No. He and used it for 350 food, which is yeah, exa exactly. It's, it's like he made a guess on what Papi Paw is going for, but he guessed wrong or he wasn't accurate with his and guess. He didn't, he didn't care about it. Like that, it's the classic HRE brain where it's like, I don't care what unit you're building. I'm going to build knights. Kashik is now diving in. She better get a village kill for free. Nice kill. That, that's a really good value if you think about it, and uh, you barely got any damage on your uh, Keshik anyways. Yeah, and the worst part still is like Anatan actually had a moment there where he saw the Keshiks. He could have rushed cancelled the stables before it went up, but now he's stuck with it, right? First knight gets queued up, Poppy Paul has the second group of Keshiks on the way. And, you know, if one knight runs into two Keshiks here, it's not a joke, well, like X and Y runs into a bar, but I mean, it looks like a joke outcome, right? That knight will just get out microed and the Keshiks will live. Golden Horde Tower on the way as well for Puppy Paw. So really, he's not that much behind in Castle Age timing. And oh, nice little reaction by Anathan pulling away the villagers. First night is out. But Puppy Paw did get the charge in on those villas. Wait. So he's eventually going to come back and try to snipe them. Can we check his vision though? Does Puppy Paw see that left side relic? I'm kind of confused why he isn't blocking that. Yeah, so he knows about that. But he's just allowing it. 
Uh, I, I feel like he probably didn't want to just stretch his attention out. Yeah. Maybe he's thinking, okay, I can't really block it, or he's just saying, listen, that's one relic. I'm better off pressuring the opponent's eco, making sure that oh. these relics are walled in. And, uh, well... Can he... <laughs> oh, puppy boy. Nice okay, walk. that was smart. Yeah, he went inside the wall. Didn't do that classic dead brain move, right? Where you just kind of rush it from outside. And that's, uh, that's two relics walled in. There is one to the very south that's almost inaccessible for Anathan, and then one on the eastern side of the map. Oh, yeah. I think... I think Papua is very well set up to secure potentially four relics over here. Yeah, yeah. So you spawn the priest and send himself, and then you camp the east side, right? Like, this is very difficult now. And this is another reason why just I think Knights is overrated with this fast castle buff HRE, right? Like, the Keshik detail aside is you've got to understand that when you're against HRE fast castle, if you're not seeing an all in play, if you're not seeing 2TC, if you're not seeing fast castle itself, your opponent has to be walling the relics, right? So, Spim and Men at Arms, these are already better options because it gives you more torch power. Oh, and then spawning archers over here. Archers with the HRE against Limitani. I don't like that at all, yeah, KP. Yeah, Limitani Keshik, right? Don't forget that important detail at the end. But I thought it was Keshik uh, oh, first, it's, but it's they just, look good. Even the unit that you're meant to destroy with, or uh, even the unit that you're meant to destroy with the archers, even that is going to survive so long against the archers because of shield walls. So, like, the unit that you're trying to counter with the archers, even, it, even against that, it's not a good counter. Hmm, I mean, maybe he could have went Men at Arms here, but... Yeah, I mean, Men at Arms with Maces would be a slightly more versatile, you know? I'm not saying it's a it's the best option for him, but HRE Archers just look very sad. Maybe Crossbows even, right? Like, Limitana kind of annoying there, but then you're at least counting the Kashyyyk's. Yeah. I, well, it feels like Anna's going to be a step behind, because, like, the bigger issue against these Archers, if you at least went Crossbows, you're prepped for this, right? Like, you're against Byzantines. What unit features in, I think, every single Byzantine game at Pro Play that goes longer than 15 minutes? It's Rangians. the Rangians, and here they come. <laughs> and this is the other problem with the with the archers. You're now facing Kashik and Varangians. That is a very, very sad matchup for Anathan. And Golems? Um, to his credit, he might yoink. Uh, he's going to yoink the second relic, though. They, I mean, he's going to touch it. He's going to hold on to it. Nice body block there, just to guarantee it. The question is, is he going to get it back? Uh, it's going to be a Kashyyyk. In. There's in. a Kashyyyk accompanying that, um, or that group of two Limitani. Yeah, and that so should that, be enough. That would be a firm no, then. <laughs> well, he's got a knight him. coming in, but it's a, this is a very low HP knight. I think this was the one that raided the base of Puppy Paw. Very yeah, doesn't quite explain it. Yeah, he doesn't exist. He's, he's here for moral support, because if a fight goes down, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, what do you mean, physical engagement here, guys? <laughs> Yeah, at least he's slowing down Puppy Paw collecting relics. Puppy Paw is still just bringing in the second one. And Anathan might be flirting with the idea of Imperial here. He's piling up a lot of food. Doesn't can have we, a whole... Yeah, he check doesn't have a lot of gold to work with, but that's a lot of food in the back. Yeah, can we check Puppy Paw's vision? Because I'm surprised that Southside Relic... Okay, he just picked it up. Yeah, that was a little bit weird. I'm surprised he left it so long. I wonder if he actually scouted that out. I mean, Anno has to go Imp here, right? Like, I don't think you can play Long Castle now. He's doing a decent job pressuring the enemy economy. He only killed one villager so far. Um, make that two. But he's idling out a lot of these veils. And uh, uh, yep, Four? that's going to be to be quite some villager kills. I like these raids a lot for him. Yeah, uh, I, I love the fact that Pipe was like, it's fine. He's not going to keep attacking me. Oh my god. <laughs> this is actually well, quite a did. lot of damage. He, he did. <laughs> Meanwhile, Keshik's on the other side. Could maybe return a blow here. I mean, the issue is Anno is now switching crossbows, but he's at the infancy stage. He only has two. I... I don't think Anatan can just go in here, by the way. Like, if he was going to, he would at least wall up. So he seems to think that the way he wins this game is in Castle. Yeah, he just doubled down. He spent all of his food. Now he's very heavy on wood, though. Makes me wonder if he's thinking about a hard farm transition, but I just feel like he's lacking juice over here. The only reason why he is uh, still ahead by two villagers is because he managed to pick off quite some on that gold mine. But besides that, Puppy Boy is now sitting on three relics. Should be four very soon. And Anathan kind of seems stuck in here in a way. He doesn't have an impressive army. 
and he's very far away from Imperial. Hmm. If he gets the crossbows together, that'll stabilize him a bit. The issue here, like, like this is why sometimes Keshix feels a bit underwhelming, by the way. If you think about it, compared to the other contracts, you go Keshix and then into Gulums, you basically get countered by crossbows the entire way, right? Like, at least when you go Longbow contract, Lance gets countered by something different. When you go Javelin contract, Camel Riders get countered by something different. To me, like, I still feel that this is a bit of a, a design oversight by the devs, is that you essentially have this one contract that gets countered by one unit type. Ah, Varangi is now showing up over here. You do have a couple of crossbows over here. Crossbows oh, yeah, on both yeah. sides, actually. Varangi has yet to turn on their Frenzy, though, as they're looking you to don't. chop these archers. If you press Frenzy, you melt, right? This is the problem. And this is, yep. I think, what people hate about H3 right now. Like, everyone's used to H3 not having marching drills before 20 minutes. Even on crossbows, it makes a world of difference. Another thing that's kind of rough, I think, as well with the mercenary contract choice, if you compare it to the other two, they're the f like these are the first units to go down in fights, right? Because they're melee. Yep. So it's like, if you think about it, the thing that usually makes Lombos or Jazz look OP is they're a premium type unit. You can throw trash at the fight and your premium unit keeps scaling. That's not going to be the case in this type of game. Instead, the premium that survives the puppy pool is just going to be crossbows. I really dislike how Poppy Pod didn't war the front of his base. Those knights keep coming in. He did lose the Prowl as well to the archers, but the bigger problem is the knights that broke into that farming eco, and once again, he starts losing villagers. I feel like he's losing so many villagers unnecessarily here, KB. Yeah, it's like the weirder part to me is that we're this deep in this game, and it's not a full wall in for either player yet, right? Like they're kind of leaving gaps open. I've got to give it to Anatan. I'm impressed he's kind of hanging in there, right? And if we check his farm transition, it's getting fire and fire. Another raid connects. It's only Varangian coming. Like, the, the issue right now is Puppy Paw halted all Limitane production. So these few remaining knights are getting good impact. And now, crossbows are here for Anathan, but he doesn't have a real front line to this force. So once those Varangians and crossbows close in, they kind of need to just fall back. Keshik being picked off over here, a bit careless for Poppy Paw. But really, we just have small skirmishes in the middle here, KP. Not really a lot happening combat-wise for these players. Hmm. I'm impressed that it's not all Relic's garrison yet. The fact that there's even one remaining out here this deep. I mean, if Anatan could sneak that back, remember that he'll have a bigger gold escalation than Poppy Paw. Like, actually, like, that's another thing. That I, I feel like I'm just on a hate train right now for the Eastern Contract, but think about this. We usually talk about Olive Oil being OP instead of gold for the Relics. Does it feel OP when your options are countered by this one unit that your opponent has a lot of? Yeah, but it's only crossbows, not for Anathan. Then we have crossbows as well from Puppy Paw, so this turns into just even trades. Looking at the eco, though, Anathan's food eco is back on track. His gold was very low because he ran out of his original gold mine, but now he's taking this large gold wane in the middle. Um, but he was yet to move out of his base, so I think he must be starting to run low on gold. But it's okay, I have all this olive oil. Wait. Maybe we sell the olive oil later. Uh, right? That was actually a thing at the very beginning of Byzantine Meadow. Oh, I, God, I, I seen... remember that. <laughs> I've seen Fast Castle builds with olive oil being sold. I believe I called it the NA builds because I remember watching <laughs> Soldier do it in a tournament. It didn't end well. He, yeah, he gathered the olive oil, sold it all for the gold, and it was a System of the First Hill Cataphract build. You, you can, we probably shouldn't talk about that unit. Like, you can guess how that ended. <laughs> That was, that was a very weird build, one of the day one builds coming out for that civilization. <laughs> Do you remember when we thought they were going to be OP? Because they're like, wow, these things are really tanky. Only one population? And you're like, how do I ever get the money for these? Crossbow's still standing strong for Anton, and he's making a pivot into Horsemen. Now, people doesn't have a direct counter to Horsemen, but he does have a fairly formidable melee frontline with the Varangians and the Gulam. So he shouldn't really be concerned about those Horsemen coming in. Anathan should be concerned about the fact that he's pushed off from gold, though. Mm. Well, Anno, if he's going to get mass horsemen, the gold loss isn't dire. He has also got the additional gathering rate coming in, right? That's the build speed and the extra 10% buff. 
farm count is at what, like 25? I never feel good when I say 25 and see mass horsemen. Like that doesn't feel sustainable. And these crossbows, they're just doing so much work for Hanatan here though. Like they've been picking off these precious heavily armored units over and over again. Reasonable fight here for Anathan as well. He's slowly cleaning up Puppy Paw's army, and I feel like Puppy Paw is Puppy running split. out of steam here a little. Yeah, he's way too split here. Horsemen, they're getting the snipe on the mango. And it just feels like the numbers aren't there. Like, usually the Byzantines break the game at this stage because of raw numerical advantage through production. Where is that in this game right now? Uh, it's, it, it's rough. I, I feel like... Bobby Boy is sitting on four relics, but let's not forget, he's still confined into his own base. In fact, when you look at his gold income, this is where it's starting to show. He's yeah. running out of gold. And, and where is his gold? Like, it's all central bound, right? Like, I actually love this spawn at Hill and Dale. I wish it always spawned like this. All the gold is in the center third. There is nothing safe in the corners. Yeah, that, that, that's such a good spawn indeed, because it forces players to move out and start um, fighting for that gold. But people finally needs to move out. He is placing a tower out there. He's also pivoting in Horseman, realizing that his access to gold is going to be quite limited. But let's not forget, you only start with one tree line as well. So wood that you have safe and available is also not infinite. I mean, the, the good news is Horseman isn't going to burn your wood too quickly, right? The worry I have is like, do you not eventually get Force Limitane here? Which is just extra wood burn, right? So I think Anno, if he could just get away with crossbow raw production. It's critical that he holds that forward where he's now posturing, right? Because he needs the 8k gold to keep the scale in long term. It is only a one relic h tree game after all. Yeah, that's the only thing that is concerning for Anathan. He's only having one relic, which is rather underwhelming. But at the same time, he's confining Puppy Paw into his own base, and something is happening up north. I think once Anathan starts pivoting there with his horsemen, he could not just decap those sacred sites, but cap it for himself and start the sacred site countdown. Now, the masculine may be count by the crossbows, but they do at least shred through the horsemen, right? Because double strike is super impactful against no melee armor. Um, Anathan at this stage should really pick up that level one melee defense, to be honest with you. Like, he knows his opponent has masculines and it's doubly effective as a counter. Now, I, I kind of rate melee defense against Ghulams up there with melee defense against Japanese. Kind of surprised we haven't seen any Stone Gathering either. I guess Anatan can't afford to stop producing units. Like, ideally, at this stage in the game, you want to be gathering stone and keep dropping the big golds. Wait, did yeah, I really? Th that's something that you will need to do. One of the things that's missing from this game, I feel, is uh, in general static defensive and placement. Neither of the players have uh, really firm control over their respective gold mines. Okay, so Teardrop Shields is ambitious. Puppy Boy's going back into Brangium, but there was another cool detail there a second ago. He went for Expilatores, so it looks like Puppy Boy is going to try to raid the economy. Yeah. The thing I like about um, the Teardrop Shields is that it buffs a variety of units. It's not yep. a something that is restricted to a single unit. So, yeah, it's going to buff your Varangians, it's going to buff your Limitani, and uh, it's actually not even a very expensive technology. So it's a very nice and versatile tech that you can get, and no matter what composition you're going for, you're going to find some value for it. This is kind of tough for Mana, though. He was already giving Gulen values in the fight, and now he's picking up spears. So I, I kind of feel like Anatan is pivoting away from his strength here. You want more in crossbows, less than anything else, if you can get away with it. Yeah, he needs to fight for this gold mine, though. I think he's now thinking about Imperial. He's piling up a lot of food, but he's desperate for gold, and that's going to delay his uptime um, in terms of Imperial Age. Yeah, and it doesn't feel free in this type of position, right? Like, it's not as if Poppy Paw is sitting on his high ground. He is posturing as well, and you don't have stone walls. So a tech up could easily just kill you in this type of game, unless you go Wells back, in which case... Nah. Why? It, it's it's too expensive. It's way too expensive. Yeah. In a, in a game like this, you cannot afford to spend those extra resources on an Elsbach Palace when you have a discount option with the Pass of Schwabia. Exactly. I mean, I guess going into Spears does give him the budget there, right? Like, compared to just scaling more crossbows. Puppy Paw is just trying to shut down the flank attacks from coming in here. But I haven't... I really seen him find that breaking point. I wonder if we're going to try to just shred down the sides. Like, Expilatories can snowball you really quickly at this stage in the game. Vet Horseman can be substantial on their DPS. I'm just wondering if Pop has noticed that he doesn't have Vet Horseman. 
I feel like the concern here for Anathan and KP is that um, he's playing very defensive now. And I think Papi is realizing that. He's realizing that Anathan is basically all in on protecting this gold mine and trying to get to Imperial. Yeah, but once again, there is no vet horseman. So like Puppy Paws fight back against this is weaker than you'd think. Trying to burn through the flank wall. I know. He's going lance next. He's also moving a lot of troops to the left side. I don't know if that was a misclick or what, but he moved to the left with essentially all of his crossbowmen. He's got not a single crossbowman to fight against this infantry man. Puck for south side though comes in. He mistimes the attack. There's horsemen. They're still not there. They're not tanky enough for this. Lance decked as well. They're getting the cleaves in. And Puppy Paul. Wait, what? He walks by them. Crossbow line untouched for Anatan. Stands his ground here. Puppy Paul, I mean, he's at least cutting the reinforcements, but essentially half of his army is not engaging near this goal. And there's a defensive tower as well that's fortified, slowly cleaning up those troops. And a lot of precious heavy infantry went down for Puppy Paw here. He killed a few villagers, but really not too many. Villager count is still neck and neck. And I feel like, again, Puppy Paw's attack here is getting cleaned up. Yeah, it, he didn't take out the key unit, right? Anatan, we talked about it earlier, it's all about crossbows. It remains about crossbows. And Puppy Paw, he may have dented the front line, but that's the cheap component. Spears, horsemen. It's the crossbows that cost the golden food that really could put a dent in Nano's timings. And Puppy Paw, tail end of that fight, now eclipsed militarily, 47 to 29. This emplacement should at least reset Anatan because now he's just got crossbows with walls up as well, right? So I don't think Puppy Paw's gonna be in peril yet, but Anno might be free for that Imperial play. Yeah, Anathan was pushed away from the gold for quite some time though, so there is definitely that for Puppy Paw, but the momentum definitely swung in Anathan's favor, and now he's the one that's going to try and pressure this gold mine here. Big difference though, these towers do have mangonel placements. One of the two is also fortified. So this is going to be a difficult one to push, but it looks like Anathan is still diving, looking oh for those villager kills. And he's going to find them as well. Puppy Paw, too many villagers out here on the gold. Nice staggered formation with the marching drills. Beautiful thing is compared to normal crossbow masses, you can get out here quick enough before the mango damage stacks up. This is wild. Anatan, does he just go for the kill now? I feel like yes. A Poppy Ball actually triggered the Sacred Sight countdown, by the way. This is how chaotic this game is, KP. Anathan is on the offensive, essentially confining his opponent into his base, but Poppy Ball still has all three Sacred Sights. Yeah, but he's going to be drastically behind on villager count soon, right? Those are villagers inside, and I can't believe this. He's just full-on sending it into four-fight outposts. Doesn't give a damn. Crossbow's still hunting for villagers on the south side of the map. Five more going to pop out and die. The irony is the fact that Poppy Poor is the one who went Exploratoras, yet yeah, Anatan's the one killing villagers with horsemen. One of the nice details here for Anatan is that only one of these two towers had a mangonel emplacement. So Anatan pulled his crossbows away, while the horseman torched down that one tower, and now that the tower is gone that had the mangonel emplacement, he is coming back because now this position is safe. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna deceive you folks. I think Poppy Paw back up against the wall doesn't quite define it. It's more like a four by four is crushing him against the wall right now. He's about to be gold staff heavy, right? Like he's basically got the relic gold, and then maybe he could try to sneak the, the resource on the flanks. Like the sacred sites are now starting to get decapped. And with less and less gold to work with, Puppy Paw's idea of eclipsing crossbow count doesn't work anymore. And he still does not have veteran horsemen. Uh, well, he's got seven horsemen, seven more in queue. So veterans is definitely something that he needs to pick up. So, Melee defense is also missing from him, oh but God. that is missing from Anathan as well. Bigger thing though, KP, Anathan is getting ready to Imperial and he's going to age up with the pass of Schwabia. For a brief moment, you could have flirted with the idea of going very aggressive with a forward Auspach Palace, but I guess he just wants to play this safe. I guess he just wants to win the game of Age of Empires 4 well, today, you know, so like, probably a good idea he went with the Swabia. Uh, this, this just sets the game on, on autopilot, right? Like, Puppy Paw, how do you really match this pace now with no gold access? Yeah, that's the big problem here, and I just love how Anathan is contained in the map. There's a little group of red units to the east of Puppy Paw's base. Those are just looking for villagers coming out for um, a gold sneak. Left side, same thing. Anathan is doing a great job keeping track of any kind of a sneak attempt from Puppy Paw. And Puppy Paw, his only gold income really is the relics that he collected at the beginning. 
second bat to complete. Pup four bat to get the bad news. Mango is also now worthless. You're up against a Cole and Civ here. Love these lands next. Remember how at the start I was like, yeah, A3 is the worst at building lands out of all the civs that can do it. And <laughs> time must have heard me because he's trying to refute that point. It's gonna be interesting against mass crossbows and Kulam, as well as horsemen too. Mm -hmm. But let's not forget, he's going to have uh, the Imperial Age decks compared to his opponent, who is still in Castle Age. And a big problem here for Poppy Paw KP is that if he wants to be on a par with his opponent in terms of um, aging, he needs to have a lot of gold. He doesn't have the gold to age up to Imperial. Another problem, of course, is the fact that his horsemen are still unupgraded. But even if he gets veterancy now, his horsemen will be vastly outclassed by Anathan's horsemen. Oi, oi, oi. Hand cannon is also queued up. Fanatan, hand. Pub tour. The fight is coming, and I think he knows it. Like, he could try to trickle the gold for tech up, but the problem is just all the imp techs, right? Like, you think about it, you need to get the elite status contract. That's 700 gold. You need to upgrade your crossbows. 700 gold. You have to then get uni tech, 700 gold. It, it's just not feasible here, right? He needs a win into the mid-map. Probably a castle drop as well before he can even think about Imperial. Yeah, he's trying to secure his berries for himself. Has to invest into double towers to do so with, but I mean, berries, it's a short-term solution at the very least. And don't forget, it's not just the gold at this point, KP. It's also the wood. Poppy Paul probably depleted his entire wood line, so now he's deprived of all resources but food. Uh oh That is a lot of elite horsemen, and they're coming to party. One nice mangonel off. shot, double mangonel shot. But yep, two, and now check the farms. I wonder who got the better shot. It's not even close here. Villagers in trouble. And that yep. should be idle time achieved as well. And this is just wave number one, remember. Anatan, wave number two has the Falcon Punch attached. 15 lands neck on the way. That is nasty. And look at that. As the army of Puppy Paw started to chase the initial group of horsemen, the Mangonels were left behind. Mangonels now gone. And with the Mangonels gone, the crossbows can break in. Hand cannoneers to support. This must be it for Puppy Paw. His population is plummeting. And Anathan remains undefeated in the Masters of Realms so far. 3 0 last week, now leads 1 0 against Puppy Paw. And a rising, a brilliant game to open up here. Both players stripping a strong sieve off the board. But, you know, thinking about the map pool at the moment, I almost feel like Byzantine maybe has a little bit more versatility in this, this draft, especially when you consider some of the options, things like Gorge, Coastal Cliffs coming out. So good signs to begin with for Antand. Really love the way he executed this game. I think what Puppy Paul show us is exactly why people don't want to go Eastern Contract. This mid game is always the biggest question mark. Early game, the idea of Keshix to get that tempo control against Greedy Sivs, great. But once you're out of that, it's a giant question mark. It's like when someone watches a pro outpost rush. They build an outpost and they go, great, now what? They have no clue. And I think that's the issue that people still can't solve with the Byzantines. I mentioned it in the cast. The issue is once you're in Castle Age, Keshiks and Ghulams are now countered by one unit type, crossbows. And that was the smart read by Anatand. It's not often these days you see HRE mass crossbows. Usually they go in different directions. But that detail is why he made this gradually look so dominant. And with that, we're getting ready for game number two here. KB, Anatand looking very promising in here. And it looks like we're Ooh. heading into the first whole map of Puppy Paws. Floodplain, a map that's definitely on the chaotic side of things. I don't know about that, KP, because uh, here's one thing. Anathan loves chaos. Puppy Paul, to a certain extent, he does too. But I feel like this map could open up a lot of avenues for madness. And let's just, you know, take a second to take a glimpse at the rest of the maps. Archipelago and Water Drake are there as well. A lot of naval combat potentially to be had. Yeah, Anna's got, what, Ottomans for Water Drake, Order of the Dragon, or Abbasids for Archipelago, and then Dry Arabia will just be uh, probably Iobids. But, you know, I I'm in pain right now, because here's the thing. Anna is rising after that game won, but Anna might be uh, declined, like, my credit card very soon as well. Because, like, the problem I'm seeing here is Marlians, a few people thought this would be a good idea, because floodplains, you don't have much space. The problem is if the spawn gods are cruel to you, what you also don't have are good pit mines because you won't be able to place houses on the edge. So let's hop in and see if Anatan has been cursed or kissed by the gods. Spawning in on the right side is Anatan playing as the Malians with the color red. 
And on the other side, Hwapipa in the color yellow in command of the Mongols. Anathan with the 1-0 lead in the winner's match here on the group stage of Masters of Realms. And KP, Papipo just suffered the first defeat, first game loss that he had in this whole event. Whereas Anathan, he is still undefeated. We'll have to see if he ends up undefeated 10 minutes in this game. Check that second gold mine to the north side. This is exactly when Marlians is a coin flip on floodplains, right? Like, I'm not sure you can fully house that. You definitely can't fully house that one. So, like, th this kind of hurts you, right? Like, especially on this type of map. A reminder, floodplains has no fishing whatsoever, right? But that does pose a different question. Could the idea from Anatan here be revolving around a certain transport shenanigan that only the Marlins yep. can do? I was just about to say that. It's a big gamble to take Marlins on this map because of the reasons that you outlined, but that blue terrain that you see on the minimap, it's a hybrid terrain. It's something that ships can sail on, but also units can pass. It's like, you know, shallow river or something like that. But there is no fish, so you're not going to contest the water for fishing, but it also means the fact that ships can pass this um, this terrain. It means that you can engage land, un land units with ships, and that could easily be the go-to for Anathan, using the units gears and the instead of transport ship to just pick off incoming units. But this isn't even a transport play. Like, check Anatan's base, and you may notice something a bit weird. The Marlins, there's, there's something missing from their base, Lytical, that usually they always build, right? Like, the house right next mine. to the TC probably signals it. <laughs> this is not your standard Marlin build. Yeah, I, I prefaced this game in the lobby saying that Anathan likes chaos, and this is definitely one of the most unorthodox Malian builds that you're going to see. Yeah, I'm wondering what Puppet Force reaction is going to be, because like the Mongols have a really strong play off of the outpost pivot, which is you drop a dock next to the enemy base, and you build an archer ship straight away. Like That's the thing about floodplains. It may have no fish, but I can guarantee you there's some really sick water plays on this map. Because what you do is you play things like Horsemen on a Bagisha, whatever, fast units. And then you layer in things like Archer ships. All of a sudden, you have a very dynamic comp to rotate across the map. It also makes the use of melee units a little dangerous because there's yeah. always that threat for demo ships. Um, bit of a misplaced um, eagle over here from the con. I I'm actually very curious what Poppy Paul would be thinking once he sees that gold mine with no pit mines on it. Like, oh, I guess I can kill the mining camp. That's something, right? Uh, yeah, let's just kill the mining camp. I guess we get something out of this, right? He wouldn't delete the mining camp before I can touch it, would he? Oh, wow. He actually did. Yep. I'm kind of surprised by that. Then again, it's in range, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. And funnily enough, it's not like you can do much damage here with these spearmen because there is not a single house that he can torch down out there. Yeah, this is kind of eternal sadness. Popcorn's just going to feel behind. So... Anno's, what, probably going to open, I assume, archers here? I mean, you could still go for the boat play. Especially with coastal navigation, it's quite intriguing. But you do need a military unit on land first to clear the spears. Actually, now that I think about it, Anatan could have made this even more painful because what he's going to... He, it's, it's the sneaky dock. <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> now, that is a sneaky, sneaky spot out there. And this is definitely not a place where Papi Paul is going to look. What would be the point for Papi Paul to look all the way at the very southwestern part of the map? He's not going to look there, and that means that this dock is guaranteed to go up. Oh, wow. This is really bad for Papi Paul as well, because the other detail that I hate here, he hasn't got any recovery play. There's no silver tree. It's deer turn. Dock gets scoured. Doesn't matter, though. Mm -hmm. What can you do about it? It's already up and operational. where you're like, wait, that's not a moon. No, it's actually going to be the Death Star from this game, right? Like only three spears wouldn't be able to burn it down anyway. We're probably looking at an archer ship opening. One intriguing thought is like, there is a play where you can go transport ship and then you transport a villager across to outpost rush the enemy gold. I mean, you could, but uh, we're going to have to see if that actually ends up happening. It's a galley opening from Anathan, so no... Malian transport ship shenanigans from him. Side note here, Papipo was able to light the mining camp on fire, so he does get the bounty for that. And can you? Okay, apparently we don't care about that villager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that may have been a mistake, Con. I, I think he could nope. potentially get the kill. Papipo looks like he takes a heavy hit there, though, so forced to retreat. Yeah, the Con doesn't have an impressive damage output, especially in Dark Age against the villagers. 
So I think Anathan was just happy pushing away the Spearman because he knew that the Khan wasn't going to be able to finish off the Villager anyways. Yeah, I, I kind of thought maybe he'd go for the attack speed arrow just to try and get the kill there. Tech up is at least complete now, but he's already a boat behind. So that should force him into the Springwood as an opener. Still no pit mines, by the way, from Anathan. Um, his only source of gold right now is the Mansa Quarry. Mm, that's kind of okay, though, right? Like, you don't need to scale in the Springle ships quickly here. You will be able to push the Spearman away in time. So, like, overall, I don't mind the way this is being played. Poppy Four, on the other hand, check this. It's Naval Arislets and then Keshix. Yeah, it's... I'm actually wondering what his plan is here food-wise, because he actually ended up losing two sheep to the volley of arrows coming out of that um, about out of that canoe. And his deer pack is very, very close to that dock. So I'm actually wondering if it's uh, static defenses into a deer push like he's doing right now. Yeah, this is quite intriguing. On the other side, it looks like we are actually getting some Marlin Lan units coming up. That's a rat on the way. But that does mean that Puck Ball, although he can defend that area, I mean, there is a risk of map control issues, right? Like, I'm thinking the first deer pack's good, but the boar and the deer are on an island past that, right? There's only so much that one dot can protect. Yep. Uh, the problem is that um, naval arrow slits are nice, but they're not necessarily super fast in killing stuff. Yeah. So if the target is juicy enough for Anathan, he's going to be diving under that tower and under the neighbor arrow slits just to get a couple of villager kills. So you have oh, to be God. very, very careful with those villagers out there. And that's why I was kind of skeptical about the Keshik detail, right? Like Springwood ship was waiting for him with open arms, heavy damage on the first Keshik. Not really what Pumpkin was looking for at the open, and now he's following up with an archer ship after seeing the Springwood. I wonder, is Anatan, is there actually a play into like a ram here? It would be an intriguing choice. Mm. And I wouldn't be against it. Because the thing with the ram is that the only thing that you can do against it is pull villagers. So, or well, maybe make with, a demo with an ship. With but... there, right? It's not possible. Yeah, but demos are terrible. They do 85 yeah, yeah, base. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah. it's horrendous in terms of efficiency. I think it's four demos to take out a ram. It's depressing yeah. when you think about the mass behind that. Kind of a calming start, actually. Usually, like, I've seen a lot of these strats involving war that get much more aggressive, but I guess Anatan is maybe focusing on a bit more of a macro game now that he's swatted away the Mongols. Because, like, realistically, with it being a Deerstone play, where is the eco-scaling for the Mongols in this game? It, it doesn't exist. Yeah, Khan does take a bit of a beating over here, but at least he finds these two ships coming in. Them on the way. I'm not exactly sure where Anatan is heading with this game right now. I feel like... We're off to a pedestrian start, but at least I'm seeing where Puppy Paw is going with his game plan. Not so much for Anathan. Testing that he's awake there. The demo was on the way in case he wasn't. I mean, actually, the demo, if he pokes that outpost, it is on the edge. Okay, there's an extra dot coming, though. Wow, the timing on that, understand that Anathan wouldn't turn around straight away. So we talked about the fact that Puppy Paw would run out of food just with the one deer pack. This is starting to give him a little bit more breathing space. Anathan is heavy on ships, though. That's going to be the third Springled ship coming for him. And he does have a demo as well. Keshik now moving, in, but Dunsos are here to repel them. So it very much seems like Anathan just wants to go full Navy over here. And he's what? actually going to sneak a dock up there. I don't think Puppy Paw sees that. Also, misplay on the Archer ship there. Nice snipe from Anathan. This could out. be a great trap. There's demo. <laughs> he's out. No, he's like, guys, please. One at a time. That's not how it works. Placement's on the way. Demo ship going to move in. Now, now, this is interesting. Big hit coming through. Finds it. Khan goes down as well. Now, this is very interesting because that dock is not just about the healing aura. It's the movement speed. Remember, coastal navigation is a surprisingly effective buffer for the Malians. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's also going to provide you with that frontline production. And the thing is that it's hidden behind a tree line. So it's difficult for Puppy Paw to actually see it. And that's very nasty when you consider that demos could pop out of this dock at any moment. Anytime he sails past over here, he needs to be conscious of sneaky demos popping out of this. We actually have emplacements on the way as well. 
for another annoyance for Puppy Core to deal with. I mean, so far, these Keshiks just feel like a waste. He did at least force a reaction into Donzo's, but if you think about the investment on both sides, it's one that Anatan was definitely happier with. Another dot crawl. Anatan starting to creep closer. Puppy needs to be careful because he could be easily baited by this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. In fact, I think this was a bait. This, this must have been a bait. We do have pit mines coming in now, by the way. Yeah, I mean, um, it's it's long overdue, though. Yeah, but this is scary now because that's when demo ship players come into the picture for Malians, right? So, like, this dock hold point for Puppy Pool could quickly just become his downfall. And it's also where Mali and Eco starts escalating because um, so far, Anathan's Eco was very, very weak. Um, now, especially with Puppy Pool starting to run out of those deer carcasses, this is where. Anathan is going to pull ahead in terms of economy. You know what's kind of wild is the idea of maybe sofas here. It sounds kind of crazy, but compared to like the Keshix, you know, you could easily just dive into the enemy eco. I guess Deerstone makes it less desirable of an idea. And it would mean that you'd allow Poppy Port to at least even the military ship situation. But yeah, I'm a big fan of this type of map over the, the fishing maps. Like, I think the beautiful thing about this type of format of water, it's slow to scale. But any loss, any single ship going down feels much more impactful. Still a very defensive game here from Pape Paw. Kind of just poking and prodding. When you look at the bottom left, by uh -huh. the way, destroyed value is so, so low. It just goes to show that players weren't really engaging in many significant fights. It's on the way, Lydical. The Rams are coming. I know, a little bit ambitious with the villager there. We'll have to back away. Uh, that was a mistake. He just gave over bounty to Pape Paw. Our ships will also get the kill, so bonus after bonus here. Yeah, a couple of sneaky demos on the back line for Puppy Paw. There's only one Kanu for Anathan, by the way, and he's got seven Springhold ships. So if he loses that Kanu, those demos could have a feast. It's tough though, right? With the double four dock, very easy to quickly just adjust and replace those. And demos now coming in for Mano as well. The ram is here, so this is tough, right? Like, you actually don't have anything but demos and Keshiks that do more damage to this. And neither of those really want to be attacking a ram. And it, it's there to absorb arrow fire as well. So unless you manually target the enemy ships, you're actually going to waste a lot of your damage output on the ram. And also the Donzos are hybridized. So they can add more DPS into the range battle. Wow, look at that damage, Lydical. Ain't that dying quick? <laughs> Archer ships. Now their demo is forced to detonate. The no. ram soaks it all, though. Why Donzo's would you do fail. that? Because he has to get rid of it. It's either four demos or 340 sprinkle shots. What one do you want, Lita? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's, that's so, so sad. That's a single ram's worth, and the value is so massive for Anathan. Oh, yo, yo. And the Donzos, I mean, they survive. I think some of them got out there, but even if they didn't, what they got out of that is the Keshik's committed, right? Yeah, he got four of them, I think, out of that engagement out of six and killed three Keshik's. That is, that is absurd. Insane. He's building He's building a new ramp, KP. And at the same time, he's also placing docks all across the map. So when you look at Anathan's vision, he knows about everything that Papi Paw is doing right now, at least on the wall. Flash coming in. The other thing is, you know, usually you give Mongols an edge on these emplacements, right? But remember, Marlins have that Mansa quarry. They can mirror it as well. It's stone or gold. Demos, have to pull back. He could wrap around here. Mongols are starting to dive in. They'll be looking onto the outpost. Top of four, four through three. It's so many demos right now. Only one archer ship as well. And you can see that Anatan is trying to dive in to pick it. He gets in. There we go. He unleashes the beasts. In this choke point might work against Poppy Paul, but good split to minimize the losses. Yeah, his oh my lord, there's at least one more ship sunk, so Anathan gets a decent trade for those demos. But his own ships body blocked Anathan a little, so he wasn't as quick with the pursuit as he hoped um, he would be. But still, decent trades out there. But as Walk is highlighting to us, Poppy Paul is what now thinking about Castle Edge, which could be a game changer here. Is that outpost rush at 15 minutes going to be a game changer? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, 
Oh, I mean, the, the, the tough part here, I think, as well, is Anatan is feeding Bounty every time he detonates a demo. You, you saw it on the UI. Like, this is the tricky part about these demo plays. You end up feeding the Mongols. Maneuvering right now. One arch chip, try and counter out. Still free demo to break through. And he actually might take out both things here. Spills and demos on top oh. of each other. Buffy Paw. Oh, no. As much as the body blocks of Anathan works worked against himself in the previous battle, this time it was Puppy Paw getting caught in the choke point, and his own demos body blocked him. Beautiful hits by Anathan over there. Sprinkle ship count now heavily in the favor of Anathan. Puppy Paw still with a huge resource bank, flirting with the idea of going up, and he's actually pulling. <laughs> yeah, it's villagers. He's pulling <laughs> wait, the torch down. No, but the timing. Look at the fortification. Oh, it's arrow slits. <laughs> yeah, because he done fortification first. The arrow slits in. He has to pull away. Looks like he'll get away before he loses a villager for it, but this is still a, a fawn in his side. Something else to distract him from the naval threat. More outposts from Anathan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anathan loves chaos, and this map is definitely chaotic. Straight out. Archer ship goes down here. Demo is being held back by Puppy Paw, but it's a double Archer canoe. Try and contest right now. Demo coming through again and Puppy Paw. A little bit slow to react. It's gonna be more ships going down. Archer ship on the flank. Oh no. Whoa. That is way too stacked. Puppy Paw. He's losing too much here. Villagers have to yeah. vacate the front line. Dogs are starting to fall. Yeah, I love how Anathan didn't take the bait on the front line uh, Springle ship. There was a low HP Springle ship on the front line that could have been demoed. Anathan completely skipped it and just went for the high HP one on the back line. And now these demos are all getting picked off. No value there for Poppy Paw. He's on the way to Castellage with the step right out, but is it coming too late, KP? Yeah, what does it do here, right? That's, that, that's the, the thing that I'm trying to like rack my brain on because here's the thing, folks. All the food gathering that Poppy Paw needs is north or south. Both of them are on the shore or in the water. So if Anatan is an age behind, but has boats everywhere, Puppy Paw has no resource. Demo, at least able to get that one before it detonates. Fort position has been forfeited. So never gonna see that deer, never gonna see that ball. On the north side, gold and berry gathering is being committed to right now. One archer ship goes up there and Puppy Paw its curtains closed. Yeah, and he's, he's very desperate for those berries. Uh, that's part of the reason why Anathan towered that. And Puppy Paul's got no standing army, by the way. Like, he is going to have this final ship removed from combat, and that's it for him. No docks, no play. I mean, I guess you could... The, the play out of this for Puppy Paul is to get Springles right now. That's kind of his only play out of this. He's trying to re dog but this feels like the harder way of doing this. I think the concern now is that that ramp can still keep on rolling. And any time Puppy Paw is pulling villagers to destroy it, you just fall back to the short line and take out a couple of villagers. Right, moving in. All the pastures are very much exposed. <laughs> he was so close to finding that wood line. Well, I mean, that's the only wood line that's safe right now for Puppy Paw, and it's near depletion. Okay, the I'm tower still stands on the right side, by the way, for, uh, for Anathan. Yeah, I I'm kind of like shaking my brain right now because we just saw Armored Hulls and Spiral Crews, but at the same time, Puppy Paw also dropped the Siege Workshop. It feels indecisive, and finally it's kicked in. This map does allow for trade. Usually it's the Mongols it. doing it in this game, but not today. I love it. Um, I don't know if um, Anathan was just concerned that Puppy Paw could get back on the water, and the only reason why he started just now is because this was the time where he secured the water, or he just wanted to invest all of his resources into the push, but I feel like he could have started trading a lot sooner, given how much um, water control he had. Yeah, I, one thing that's scaring me I'm seeing right now is Puppy Paw choosing men at arms against Springle Chips. That's terrible, right? Like, base HP, they, 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 the damage mitigation is so low. Like, look at that. That that one guy, it's five hits to kill. And it's a, it's an expensive unit for a player that's um, struggling for food. Um, at nice least, Puppy Paw got a couple of ships back on water, and he's slowly taking this tower out. But I think now Anathan understands that there is a substantial fleet coming for him from the north, so he's going to converge on this position. Canoes need a nice split, demo. though. Looks like one is going to be taken out. He has still got the four dock here. Placements are on the way, and for some reason, Anathan is building Muso Funny Warriors. They are funny. Demo. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he's got the touch. <laughs> Oh my lord, if that's a kill, at least Papi Paw survives, so there is there is that for him, but 
the micro is on point for Anathan here. Mm -hmm. Musa Fadi, like, it's intriguing to see them coming out like this, but makes sense. He already sees men at arms. Remember, stealth is going to be a big deal. Like, I don't think there's that many outposts around here. There's maybe like three maximum, and they're all pretty much in the same location. Yeah, Anathan is thinking about Coslage himself as well. Yeah. Demos need to just find their way in. And Poppy Boar needs to get the hell out. Wait, oh no, the men at arms are griefing right now. <laughs> needs Demos. to split the walking news. Not They're getting pool. some decent hits, but um, I don't know if this is enough for Poppy Paw. That's the problem. Um, keep in mind, his wood line is more than exposed. So losing demos one after another like that, this is not something that he needs to be happy with long term. Farimba, it's going to be a Farimba play. I, I can't believe it. I mean, he has got the trade, right? Terrible pit mines, but the trade makes up for it. Yeah, and when you have an insane amount of gold, the Farimba is a great landmark to put it to use. Honestly, like, Puppy Paw came to play an RTS, and Anatan, like, watching this Ram tank all these shots, it's more like he's playing Overwatch. This is a Reinhardt main right now. Like, <laughs> you just can't break him! Anathan's oh. playing an insanely chaotic game, and uh, Two demos. you just gotta love, you just gotta love that. Puppy Paw, in a bit of a trouble here. Archie Ship's finally gonna arrive just in the nicker. I mean, this is tough though. Like, I think Anatan needs to calm down a bit, right? Once again, that bounty, you are snowballing your opponent's economy every time you punt. But that is the hit we're looking for. Ram deletes the outpost. Musafadi and Donzo is now in onto the eco. And Papi Paul can't afford those eco losses. He's down by 15. And while he needs to put these fires out, it takes away the attention from his trade. I'm not even sure if Papi Paul found the trade just yet. I, I mean, how would you even know about it, right? Like, if you check his vision, he's not leaving his island. Mongols are apparently allergic to water. Tech up complete. Anno can now start getting the upgrades as well. That's why he's been losing these fights, by the way. Armored hull, sprinkle crew, it's a big difference. Extra one tile range, 20% more attack speed, and then extra health. Once that's in, that's where this can get more uncomfortable. Demo count. Ooh. Calm down, lad. <laughs> Send in the Moose Oh, the hero, <laughs> Bill! <laughs> The Musafadi doesn't even lose his life. That was the best part. He's like, I know you're going to leave. Oh, fantastic. Donzo's, this damage is starting to add up. A lot of low HP bars. Yeah, it's it's also the idle time, KP. Wood income is a problem for Puppy Paul, and he keeps losing ship cool. after ship. Uh, sure enough, um, Anathan's losing ships as well, but Anathan's eco is untouched, whereas Puppy Paul is um, strained for resources. He keeps losing ships like that in Springwood. Musafadi. I, this is the thing, the Musafadi here, they can stealth and walk past the fleets, right? Like, you're not going to have a fishing boat out here. You're not going to have a scout. The Khan can't be everywhere at once. It's impressive, actually. I think this is one of the, the better games for Musafadi usage. Like, usually it's just zerging, right? This isn't zerging, it's just strategic stealthing. Yeah, he's picking off valuable pieces of equipment from Puppy Paw as well, that last Springle. Springle is such a good unit when it comes to dealing with ships that's now removed from Puppy Paw. Poppy Paw, by the way, has a very unbalanced eco here. He's floating 2,000 gold. No, he's just prepping for Imperial Age. I mean, sure. At this point, it's, it's in consideration. <laughs> to, to be fair, he finally reached the trade of his opponent. Anathan needs to fight, but that's a the lot demos. of demos. And heading in. Splits it up a little bit. Archer ships are doing a good job of mopping this up from Poppy Paw, though. Nice reaction there. Backs it off yeah. perfectly. He loses nothing. I feel like Anathan just wanted to finish this game right here with a massive demo push, but it's just it just fell flat. The yeah. archer ship picked up the demos. He still has two more to work I, with, but this demo push was definitely lackluster. I, I think Anatan was too busy focusing on this stuff. Like, uh, what you need to do with those demos, he should have reared around the left side and the right side wide. He sent it down the center into the archer ships. It couldn't have been easier for Pop to just walk away from that fight. And now this trade-off... Makes me wonder if that was just a diversion from Anathan. Maybe he just said, listen, um, you're going to focus on the demos, and while you're doing that, I'll butcher your eco. And that's exactly what he's doing. Half of Puppy Paw's eco right now is idle. This is bad, actually. Puppy Paw, you saw that dive. Anathan immediately targeted out the galleys. More demos are coming. More moves Fadi on the way in. It may be a messy fight, but at this stage, the lead is so substantial for Anathan. He doesn't need clean. Yeah, that's exactly it. And Sure enough, he lost all those demos, but Puppy Paw still has 30 idols. Those villagers are idle for like 30 seconds to a minute now. And that's the concern for Puppy Paw. 
He's paying attention to microing the water, mm -hmm. but at the same time, there is land pressure harassing his villagers. Anathan can focus on exclusively on his fleet because Puppy Paw doesn't have a land army threatening his own eco. Con. <laughs> what <laughs> shot? I can take it. Oh, wait, they've got giant bolts. My only weakness. And look at it. Same thing again. I, I think Anathan has given up on trying to actually ram down that fleet with demos. He's just hitting everything he can with the demos and using them to distract his opponent while the Musafari sneak in. Yeah, there are at least archers here now to be more of a nuisance. I wonder if Anathan just considers switching into sofas, right? Like, with the amount of Musafari scaling, you could afford a few sofas here. He's got nine demos, KP. <laughs> he, he's Wait, waiting here, for it. Please don't go into the choke point. Like, do not repeat what happened last time. He's going to back up. Harvey Port, I mean, at this point, it almost feels like a crap will get off the pot, right? Like. Such a huge miss macro. 2.6k gold and 1,500 food. Uh, yeah, th Wait. this is a problem for Poppy Boy. He's floating so many resources, but his population is abysmal. Good it's up. 110 population. <gasps> if he wants to go imp, he needs to go imp. Wait. Um, but, but he needs to do something with those resources. But here's another four. Like, Anantan's kind of going the hard way about this. He now knows how many villages are on that tree line. Just send the Springholds or an archer ship over right now. At some point, the villagers will get so close to the shoreline that you can demo them. <laughs> That's why he hasn't sent the boats. Finally, the demos. What, which, which one of the 17 demos do you think he'll nominate for that? <laughs> oh, well, God. 17 demos. He definitely wants to finish uh, finish the game here. Is there like a is there a secret Easter egg I don't know about? If you explode all of them at once, it's a nuclear detonation. I mean, we are genuinely going for Michael Bay levels of explosions here. Step readout is now frontlining. Oh and, and that's a gold mine that you will have to send villagers to if you're Puppy Paul. And when you send villagers there, the demos will be very happy about it. Yeah, I, 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 good idea, lit up, but maybe next game. We're heading back. <laughs> maybe we try the west side gold vein. That one seems less contested by a castle right now. <laughs> Uh, Poppy Paw still floating so much gold here. He doesn't want to use it or just use it to buy food because now he has no gold income. He's out of gold. That's mineable. But at the same time, his resource bank is just massive. It's being unused entirely. Maybe the answer to this ship fleet is just the Pui Pui Pao. I, I, I really, let's be totally real here. Like, where is this ending right now for Poppy Paw? I mean, spring golds with shutter triggers wouldn't be a terrible idea, sniping ships, but... He needs to do something with those resources no matter Demo's what, right because Anathan is using those resources. Hey, honey, don't mind me. <laughs> Just moving into the neighborhood. Oh, man. There He's goes the one fleet of Poppy Paul once again. Counter play isn't going to work out. Poppy Paul, the Grand Mongol fleet, has been wiped out. That, that fleet is gone, and now the archers are also getting cleaned up here. Really? Anathan was waiting for it, and I think one of the big differences between the two players is that Anathan is using up his resources. Poppy Paw still has a giant bank that's being unused totally. Oh. Where does this end? What is the recovery now? Docks are going down again. Maybe the Spring should have been the player originally. Maybe it wasn't viable. Maybe before that was always going to be a loss situation. But finally, Anathan is looking to end the game. Sofa's now queued up. There is Imperial finally for Puppy Paw, the Kaganet Palace, but you really have to wonder if it's coming in too late. He's at 68 population KP, confined into his own island, and he depleted the wood line. He's out of wood. He's not going to have any safe code to he work, doesn't but he's need just out wood. of resources. He doesn't need resources, Lytical. Three units are OP. I read it on a Reddit thread one day. It must be true. Springle was immediately queued up, so we are going full mech army as a recovery mechanism. It's the only thing left for him. Demos. <laughs> and the demos are being sent out. in to take out the landmark. <laughs> that's how big Anathan's lead is. Oh, 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 that's efficiency right there. Let me just park myself in the middle of those three docks. Archers trying nice to split. split. Ooh, uh, not so nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I jinxed him. Valtron's on the way. He actually needs to demo these right now. Like right, right now. <laughs> this is not negotiable, yeah. Anatad. Don't, don't shortchange this crap. Either wait yeah. the demos there for the first bout you on, or blow them the hell up. 
Uh, Poppy Paw is down to just 63 population. Essentially, being villagers exclusively, but those Baoshuan, he's hoping that those can turn this battle around. Sofas are coming in from uh, from Anathan, though. Demos are here as well. Demos are the count of this Baoshuan, and the Baoshuan isn't going to have much assistance. Shipwrights. Looks like, actually, yep. that's not going to happen. It's gone. And also, the Sofas are now starting to distract the Spreewalds, so Baoshuan is going to have to fight tooth and nail against the canoes. It's way too many ships. It's just way too many ships for this Baoshuan. There's also a trade ship just freaking out at the back line. It's probably got mixed up with some other ships. So but the Baoshuan is gone, and That's so is Poppy Paul. My insanity is quickly becoming your insanity. And it's hand on match point, looking to provide another upset in the group stage. He's still undefeated in this entire tournament, and it's just crazy, KP. He's playing against one of the hottest AoE4 players right now, but he just seems to be on top of things. And really, game number two, we go into the Realm of Chaos. We take this specific map, and Anathan comes in with a wacky but efficient way to play this map. And it's something that Papi Paul never seemed to have an answer for. No, and you know, I'm starting to wonder, is there anywhere we can go where sanity will resume? I mean, floodplain should be the most crazy one left in the draft, right? But there's still a few wacky maps with intriguing strategies. You have to remember like half of the map pool essentially is just full of potential chaos and what the f <laughs> is, I'm sorry, Let's does Poppy go. Does, does Poppy Paul just want to play more GSL group games? Why are we seeing French on Archipelago? The year is not 2021. Let's just be honest though, KP. Poppy Paul probably chose to play Archipelago here because he saw how Anathan played uh was it Anathan against Demo? No. Cat. No. Cat against Demu. Oh, okay, Try not to okay, melt okay. your brain I'm too much. Using those two matches. <laughs> I was like, dude, yesterday we had that Islands game. And yeah, no. one of the players just failed to finish the game, but Anathan, yeah. it's going to be back into the realm of water. Archipelago, OTD versus the French, and uh, KP, I feel like Poppy Paw needs to pull something wacky here with the French. Uh, so we I, just, I could we, see a knight landing. I'm, yeah, I'm not I was about kidding to say, you. We, we just school a cavalry knight raid, right? Like that, I, that, exactly. I don't see anything else that makes sense here at all. Uh, maybe... Okay, wait, no, no, I think... Lida, hear me out. You're going to want to mute me, but hear me out. Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Transport ship. You trade. It's micro heavy, but you do get rich. Am I interesting? Am I, am I banned? I think I'm still here. Okay. I, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, this probably is going to be your last cost at EGC TV <laughs> after comments like if that. If I but... am right about this, okay? Like, I get a raise. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Let, let's wager on that, okay? I feel like um, I do want to bet on that, you being right about that. Oh, no, no, no. It's such... No, dude, like, the, the, the odds you'd have to give me have to be so beneficial. It's like, you know when someone sees a game... Like, when someone was... If someone was to see you in a show match against Vortex, right? And, like, someone bets on you, like, why has he done that? The guy's like, statistically, it's like, I will make 99 times what I spend if I win, right? It's like... That's not bad. You'd have to, It's probably not going to happen. I think it should. What I think this is really going to be about is the galley ass. Emphasis on the ass. I believe this ship no longer functions the way people are assuming because demo ships recently got changed so that they no longer get bonus damage against broadside. They get damage against massive ships, which means they counter galleasses. This is, this is an interesting uh, matchup, though, KP. There are some things that are reasonable on this map from from the French. Um, one of the things that comes to mind is, of course, the villager production buff, which is a nice extra passive eco boost. But at the same time, Order of the Dragon is just such a powerful civilization on this map. It's one of the more beloved civilization picks. Uh, yeah. Normally, you could argue that Papi Paul may, is maybe using uh, one of his less beloved civilizations for this map, but this is match point for Anathan. He needs to go for something that... Um, essentially extends this series because if he ends up losing, he's going to have to play a decider next week. Yeah, I mean, it, it, to even stay alive in this, think about the remaining picks. Ottomans or Ibids both can work on Water Drake. Puppet Boy's probably going, what, Delhi or Japanese there? He has got Roos for Dry Arabia. That's intriguing. Roos versus uh, the Ibids. I think Roos can still edge out. The whole idea is you go 2TC and then you wall in the Relics so that the Fast Castle doesn't mean anything. But you know, we'll have to see if we get that deep. I mean, Anatand. 
There's no denying it. Right now, Order of the Dragon is easily a top four sieve for water maps, especially Archipelago. Meanwhile, French. French are the number one pick on water maps in 2021. The year is 2024. We may have a problem. In the, the one of the new line civilizations for Anathan with the Order of the Dragon here on Archipelago. And Papi Pa going very, very old school with the French here in yellow. And KP, one of the things I'm noticing over here is that the central island that usually spawns between the two players, <laughs> it's extremely tiny. It's almost non-existent. Mm. And I am eyeballing trade posts, which might enable a chamber of commerce with a transport ship. I'm just saying... Like, you know you're going to get a few eco upgrades, right? Like forestry, you're going to get your broad axe. Will Baron, maybe not. It's micro heavy, but it could be worth it. I'm, if it sounds like I'm delusional, it's because I can't understand any other reason why you pick French on a water map. I could see a night landing. I feel like that's the most that's so legitimate expensive. way. That yeah, is so it's, expensive. I'm, I'm not saying it's uh, something I have a strong amount of belief in. But at the same time, I feel like um, my people might be thinking, okay, I need to pull um, some tricks out of my hat. Especially mm. considering that we just finished the map that was very, very heavy on naval combat and water micro. Maybe Puppy Paul feels like, oh shoot, if this goes into a classic water micro game, I don't feel confident about it. So I'm going to try to do some trick play. It's, mm. it's a difficult one because as you highlighted, knights are awfully expensive. So producing a knight, a transport ship, and then yeah. additionally producing combat ships, it's a big burden on your economy. It's but at the same burn. time, yeah, if, if he's not doing that, I don't know how or what his game plan is. I'm, I'm yeah. sincerely hoping that this is not just a classic, okay, let's try to fight naval combat and I pick the French for that. You know what it is? The French have one thing, one thing that they can benefit from from water. If you click on the dock and highlight the spring ship, you'll see it. Warcogs are notably cheaper than your standard, right? Because I think it's 110 food, if I remember correctly, for standard. So you actually save some resources there. It, you can go check the Order of the Dragon dock and you see the difference in cost. But I don't feel like that makes up for the difference in gathering rate that Order of the Dragon has. Now, one thing that could be interesting here, though, is that Warcogs are meant to snipe the arrow ships. And Basically, when you look at naval combat, what you're looking for is opportunities to snipe the enemy arrow ships so that your demos can annihilate their hulks. So maybe what Papi Paul is thinking here with the French is, okay, I have a more cost-effective way to get rid of the enemy, um, the enemy arrow ships, and then I can just use my demos to sink the rest of their fleet. Hmm. If we do see that knight play, I think it has to be two knights, by the way. Because if you send one knight in, if you check Order Dragon Villages, they have higher base damage. And also, they can't be too hit by French knights, right? So, like, the Order Dragon have 65. A knight with a charge, he can two-hit kill. But it takes three on the Guild of Villagers, and with the higher base damage, they don't scramble over each other because there's less of them to get in attack. So, like, one knight, to me, won't be good enough. Uh, we're going to have to see in a sec, though. Like, I, I still think Chamber of Commerce can make more sense. Even just the ability to trade might prove valuable here. But apparently, he does want to go there for the sock. Is. And here's the thing, this might work for Puppy Paw because Anathan chose an awkward gold mine. He actually opted to go for the large gold mine to the south of his DC, but it is this is definitely far away from the town center. He didn't go for the standard gold mine that he normally would go for. And you see, this is actually a really good target to harass with your knights. Assuming you go for a knight landing, of course. Yeah, like school cavalry is just gonna sit there. I don't think you immediately commit into it, because you have to get the opening ships right, right? And um I think Poppy Paul, he wants to be a little cog champ, right? Especially with that yeah. discount. The, the thing I'm looking for, KP, is that Poppy Paul deleted his scout. If you want to go for night landing, it makes sense to keep the scout yeah. alive for extra vision. So he chose the optimization and leaving a house uh, a little bit later. Yep. Yes. So, so this is just him trying to outmass with the gradual villager production lead in unison with the cheaper sprinkle chips. I don't know about this. I feel like Puppy Paw, this has to be an outplay then. Mathematically, I don't know if I can support this. Like the, the whole logic, I, I remember there was a debate about this the other day in the chat about why I like all the dragon on, on water so much. Like if you do the maps, yes, you do have less villages, 
but the whole idea is you have one less villager every fifth like cycle, right? Because it's extra four seconds per. It's like when you have five, your opponent has six, and you re recur. But like your base gathering rate is buffed by 28%, right? So like if you do the maths on that, that's 140%. So it, it doesn't really put you behind. Uh, you also benefit from small things like the quicker build speed. And when you add in the Ark and Chapel in this matchup, I think that's enough to offset the French increased production on TC. Yeah, it's double dock so far. There is double broad axe as well. And indeed, Puppypaw is going to be playing into the cogs here. I feel like this is a very experimental build, KP, but I think this could be more about um, things to come for Puppypaw, potentially for next week as well. Because let's not forget, even if he loses here, he isn't eliminated. So maybe he feels a little bit more experimental in this series because he does have that freedom to do so. So you're saying Poppy Paul just wants to play more Age of Vampires? <laughs> is, that our defense, is that our defense for him getting whooped 3-0 by Anatan? Was that well, Vortex's I mean, reason as well? Um, to, well, to be fair, he's down 2-0. So maybe he's saying, listen, uh, I'm going to do something more um, off meta, see where it goes. Especially because, uh, again, he opted to go with this civilization. So he seems to have a plan with these war cogs. And I'm not necessarily against it. I think with a good use of demos, it can work out. Well, looks like the opening fleet, Anatan, is going to buffer him away. The other thing is, like, fearfully, you should be able to scale the docks quicker because all the dragon build them faster, right? Uh, one thing that you need to be careful of your puppy paws, you don't want to fly on, uh, fight on top of your fishing boats because they can easily become a target for the demo. Yep. Galley pushed back for the time being. Nice micro by Anatan. Both players went for double broad axe here, so for the time being, it's uh, kind of the same upgrades for both players. Double docks on both sides as well. There's one demo out here for Puppy Paul already. He's also apparently sneaking something around that little um, island. Yes, yeah, the archer ship. Yeah, yeah. Yep. This, so because typically like the players tend to trend up coast, not towards their opponent with their echo, but further away. So he's hoping that he's going to catch Anatan pivoting his fleet away from where they're fighting. Yeah, this strategy works a lot less on this specific map though, because this island is so so tiny. Yeah, it's the other unideal thing is like, despite the small spawn on the island, there isn't that classic stealth order that you usually get in that situation. Like, it, I don't think there's any stealth order. There's one pocket on the northeast edge of the map, so it won't matter at all, basically. We saw how big that was, right? The Beastie game in particular gave him that stealth wraparound for a critical fight, where he was able to just dunk on Kiljardi in the Archipelago game yesterday. Kind of heartbroken we don't get it here. Spearman being built. Wow. So he's anticipating knights eventually. Kind of crazy that he's able to do this. It does make him a lot weaker on water, though. Just coming in. Uh, he's sniping Watch. a couple of fishing boats, and the galley's gone. Yeah, he got baited hard there. Repair crew's going to come in from the fishing boats. Demo does get the detonation, but doesn't get the kill. However, the archer ships are now targeting onto the fishing. And this is still really good for Poppy Paul. And this is exactly what um, I thought about when I saw the cogs coming out. The idea is that you want to snipe those galleys. That's all that matters. And after that, you just need one or two good demo hits to win the water. And that's exactly what we're seeing from Puppy Paul here. KP, he's not done yet. Yeah, Anatan, he is going to retreat just on the edge of TC range. Puppy Paul staying right out of it, though. Demo is going to come out. Big damnation hit. Two. That Ooh, might be enough Lord. to reset. Yeah, Puppy Paul. He might have overstayed his welcome, but there is a nice demo oh! as well. Sinks the, sinks the ship and kills the villager too. And hits the fresh Hulk down to no HP. Double Galley going to reset now. Warcock just trying to leave. Detonation does clip them, but good micro by Puppy Porn. You know what's really screwing Anatan here? It was the side investment. The racks and the Spearman, that's 310 resources that were not going into boats, all because he got baited, assuming there was a night play to happen here. Oh man, and also beautiful demos as well for, for Puppy Paw. His Springle chips are a lot more cost effective when it comes to sniping these galleys. And now the demo is creeping in as well. Oh! Oh no. That's a wipe. I know. He's got practically nothing left on the water right now. And the hunt is on. How this is. 
I, I feel like a lot of pro players will look at this game and think a little about the water meta because Poppy Pop came in with an interesting game plan here and it's working out. Well, it, it, I think a big part of it is Anatan mind gamed himself here. He thought way too much about that night idea. Like legit, think about this. Really just think about this. The cogs cost less, right? So you know your opponent's likely to have a one-up lead, but you gave him a two-up lead in Navy count because you built yeah. a Rax and a Spearman. I wonder if this build has a branch that actually goes for Knight, because yeah. it, it's very possible. Um, the thing is that you save a lot on those cogs and it might allow you to go for a Knight or two if your opponent is not investing into this defense, though. So maybe there are spin-off versions of this build that we're seeing here from Puppy Paul. Puppy Paul with an insane Warcog League right now. Six spring ships ahead, maintain that lead. So Anatan basically needs a, a crafty demo play to reset this. Otherwise, this will begin to snowball. It's tricky though, because Poppy Paw is heavy on the galley ships. Um, the thing is that Anathan is so low on his own spring gold ships that Poppy Paw can go heavy on his galleys. He's going to be up to three galleys. Three more demos are also hiding somewhere, if I would have to guess. Probably close to that neutral island. Nope. No, I think they're, they're hiding forward. somewhere at the back then. Yep. yep, there they are. Fishing boats as well for the repairs on the go. Flash coming in. So Poppy Paw just trying to end him here. Demos. Need to time this right. Looks like the springs are going to be forward. Galleys have to return fire now to protect the fleet, though. Nice hit there. Other demo heavily injured, and it will get dunked. This is not getting better for Anno right now. He has to come in and clear the galleys and follow up with demos. It's the only way that you can get back on the water here. But it's coming at a heavy cost. And Poppy Pop pulled fishing boats as well to keep damaged ships alive. He ends up losing one of the um, war cogs, but still the damage on Anathan is just massive. And let's not forget, Poppy Pop is piling up resources. He might be flirting with the idea of Castle Age here. That could be dirty. Doesn't the Royal Institute have one or two Navy techs in it? I always forget. Uh, even if he so. doesn't have that, he is going to have all those Castle Age unlocks no matter what. Yeah, it's probably going to be Guildhall. That's a safe play anyway. Anatan always up against the shores here. Whoa, boy, calm down. Peels off the last moment there. Demo's chasing out here, but man the sails. Should give Puppy Paul the disengaged distance. The micro oh, nice question. Anathan, though. Yeah, he just stopped moving. I think Puppy Paul was free there. But in fairness, with this type of lead, I mean, I say that. Anatan, he has closed the distance now. Six springles to eight. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like Puppy Paul is not grouping up his demos, and that's why he cannot get good hits right now. He's got a wave coming. Four demos are on the way. Anatan moving out with just the one to back him up. A little fishing boat in the mixer. Nice clip there. Hits under two of the war cogs. Has enough to start sinking straight away. He does still have the man the sails for the retreat here. Yeah, galleys need to be taken out by Puppy Paw here to allow the demos to hit. But the, finally, the demo oh. comes in. Nice Boy detach blocks. by Anatan. Yeah, but he didn't get the final hit in. Beautiful micro. Anatan, he even keeps the industry world alive. Say that, it sends it back in. Oh my lord, that's huge though. Wait, is he, he keeping this? Uh, it's so chaotic, KP. It's back and forth, but this demo oh, no. is clutch. Yeah, he needs an archer ship. Anatan needs an archer ship right now. This is seven demos incoming. Puppy Paw, he can wipe the fleet. There is not a single archer ship in QKP. This might be it. Split coming in. Anatan's like, okay, I tank one for one. Maybe it's not too bad here. But Two for one, one we've is... got a problem. And he still doesn't have a single galley in queue. He is no. only queuing Springle ships. Springles and demos. Finally, he admits that, okay, I might actually need an archer ship here, but the question mark has to be, is it too late? Another ship sinks, another one barely alive. This one survived with just a tiny bit of HP. Check those health bars. A puppy paws yeah. fleet looks rough as well. Like, he's got two yeah. healthy, and I think the rest of the spring <laughs> is almost dead. Oh, damn! Bobby Paul doesn't know about the dock to the south, by the way. And I this think he is, does uh, now. <laughs> yeah, he now knows about it. And Bobby Paul got banked up as well. Anathan crucially survived with a couple of his low HP ships. And I think that's a game changer right now. That's the reason why he still has a fleet. I know. Bobby Paul accepts one's going to have to go down here. I mean, Anton, the widespread really has saved him from getting cooked in this one. Bobby Paul, you have to wonder. Did he need to invest these resources into more aggro? He's been saving up for a while now. Castle feels inevitable. Will Anatan sense it? 
Yeah, I, I don't know if Anathan really has the power to retaliate for Castle Age, though. Both players are exhausted here. Um, most of these ships are very heavily banked up. At least Anathan now has archer ships to snipe those demos with. Papi Paw is going to make a push once again to conceal his age up. Yeah, and Anasan, remember the Arkin isn't really buffing him anymore. That wood line is getting very thin, so I think he's almost out of range of getting that extra increased gathering rate. Now, the base rate for OOTD on their villages means they can actually just move out from that Arkin and feel a little bit better, whereas H3 players tend to feel immediately depressed at that stage. A side note is that we had quite a lot of fishing boat kills back in the past with Puppy Paw, so that's actually something that's coming into play. Puppy Paw fully focusing on the south side now. I know. He's going to push from the north. Detonation in isn't really going to get the kill here. Yeah. Puppy Paw has a lot of demos that cannot finish those hawks off, and uh, that's part of the reason why his uh, naval fights aren't necessarily super efficient. No, I know. Did throw away a few demos carelessly there. Be a little bit careful here. So he is in a position where he could maybe punish the eco, but he needs to be fast. Armored hulls just got queued up. It's, it's tricky though. He doesn't know how many demos his opponent has. This could be a nasty surprise for him if he's not cautious. Two, ready. One more queued up. Fishing starting to get hit. Demos Flank. are going to get denied. Backstab comes in. It's a trade out of demos, but one that hurts Anatan more. Dive gets in though. Galley's a little bit slow on the retreat. Anatan needs all the damage he can get, though. There's no going back from this because you know the techs are coming through. Armored Hull's in. Spiral Cruise is about to hit. He needs to wipe the fleet now. Yeah, he sunk a couple of fishing boats, but his own fleet is getting decimated. And the upgrades are now in for Puppy Paw. This is just insane momentum now for our yellow player here. He reposes this attack. His fleet is still intact. And now he's got the power of the Guild Hall as well. Yeah, and Demo's just being thrown away, so even more wasted economy. Anatan nowhere near tech up, and Poppy Paul, every minute that passes, the pressure has to be mounting on Anno, because that guild hall is going to be trickling in the edge that Poppy Paul needs. And it, now this is a vastly superior fleet, and as much as Anatan can exploit Poppy Paul aging up with an attack, the same goes for Poppy Paul. When Anatan tries to age, Poppy Paul will dive, and this is going to be very difficult for Anatan to hold. This is a healthy fleet. Remember, the last few times Papa Paul came in, they were all on Death's Door. Those are brand spanking shiny new, looking to give a bruising out here. Demos are going to come out, only two of them though. Armand Holes makes it a lot harder to actually get the kills with these strikes, but maybe, just maybe. Oh. Half the fleet gone, still two demos left. Made that one more demo to clean house. Turned. That is a monster stand and a lifeline for him in this game. Poppy Paw, he didn't have a single galley to snipe those demos with. And, you know, we talked about how he could be playing this with the Warcox KP. And we thought it's going, it was going to be sniping the enemy galleys and then using his own demos. He was playing almost exclusively Warcogs at this point, And he got punished by a fleet of demos. But, but, but the extra one range, no care! For a shotgun to a sniper fight. Demo's now moving in. Fishing about to get idled out. I mean, notice Anatan. He's like, okay, you've got castle. You've got better ships. But if you can't get the numbers, I do not care. And Anatan's demos are finding so much more value compared to Puppy Paws. Puppy Paws demos barely sunk ships the last few minutes. Whereas Anatan sunk the entire Castle Age fleet from Puppy Paw. Another Warcog is going to go down at the very top. It's very low HP. And these demos are just not connecting for Puppy Paw. No, they're getting idled out as well. I think he's getting a bit distracted. Five demo pump on the way, but bad yep. timing. The galleys just arrive. Uh, it's, it's two galleys. Anathan is diving in to snipe the galleys because he needs those demos to work out. No, well, demos come around the bat, but now you can just pivot. Besides, like going to cut the reinforcements, but I don't think it's worth it getting one springboard here. Demos starting to creep in. Anatan, just how long can he keep doing this? I mean, it is an AK gold underneath that Arkin. I mean, he's still stuck in Feudal Age compared to a Castle Age opponent, and I wonder if his push is now stalling out as well, similar to how Puppy Paw stalled out back then. Maybe nice Puppy hits Paw. by Puppy Paw, finally. Those Remember. demos? Wait, uh. where is Anatan's food? <laughs> he lost all the fishing. <laughs> well, so did Puppy Paw. Both players just annihilated each other here. They are both just sending unlimited demos at this stage. Like, there's barely any food for anything else. And oh, my. Oh, my. 
so reminiscent to the previous fight when Puppy Paw was the attacker. Like, Puppy Paw dove in, his fleet got annihilated by demos. Same thing happened to Anathan, now he dove in and his fleet is gone. He's got a single galleon, two demos out, that's it. Riku, and we go again, but this time Puppy Paw. He's putting that ass on display, Gallius on the way. <laughs> and no, no, I'm pretty sure these do die to demos now. As I said, like they've changed the wording. Like if you hover on a demo, it now says massive. It used to say broadside, which is why Gallius's were kind of busted. And now we're getting to the stage where players have exposed wood lines, potentially exposed gold mines as well. So you will start seeing these players sending in a couple of galleys to harass each other's um, lumberjacks. It looks like Puppy Boy just oh, wow. pulled off all the food from the guild hall. You wouldn't know it. It's not an impressive reserve here. Yeah. But I wonder why he did that. I mean, he was practically out of food, right? And he need he wants that Gallius play, okay. and he wants spring on some Nazi ships. He is piling up a oh lot of food God. and gold, KP. Demo pull coming in from Mano. He can hit the fishing here. Ooh, he stacked him at the end there, though. Gallius gets a good hit. And the Gallius yeah. threat has now arrived. Ah, uh, look at that majestic ship sailing down in the middle. Remember, Anathan is still Feudal Age, and his food eco is abysmal. So, for him, Castle Age is not really a thing anytime in the future. A Anno? Whoa, Ooh. boy! Uh, I mean... Not trading efficiently there. Just a single ship lost. Is. Given the circumstances, that's fine. Now the trade coming in. Demos chasing on. Puppy poor in retreat. The Gallius is not so lucky, though. That is the slowest ship in the Navy. Oops! <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if Gallius is a good idea against mass demos. I mean, in theory, they, they're your Barrett 50 cal, right? You just need to make sure you've got a nice fortified location to shoot from. Uh, Puppy Paw is out of gold, by the way. He's down to 79 gold per minute, has to relocate his gold mine, so that's going to stall out his production a little. At the same time, he is swimming in food. I don't know what he's going to spend it on. I'm actually wondering if at this point we're getting to the stage where he can afford to land a couple of knights. No, more galleys. <laughs> I mean, at this stage, can he just surge spring walls? He's still with that fat wood line to the north side. Like this is where actually I think he's going a in. lot. I, I know it. I know it's crazy, but I see no other reason to hold that much food. And he's piling up gold as well. I think he wants him. Okay, Danatan might get another chance to rise up from the dead here. Feudal Age versus him. <laughs> Demo. Oh no, no. <laughs> All right, Anno does not get a chance to rise up from the dead. All demos removed from the table. Only two left. And they that's hit the good for the Gallius. Is it? Because <laughs> I think it may be getting overconfident here. Demo. Okay, call this one the chosen one. He's dodging five galleys, but he won't be able to get deep enough. <laughs> how oh is this Lord. game still going? How How is this not over? That Gallius is still standing, KP. And it will remain standing. The Royal Fleet of Francais comes through. We are gonna get a point on the board for the Canadian, and we are going deeper into the night. Uh, if you're an AOE4 fan, you must be loving that because this series is nothing short of crazy. Like, what we are seeing over here, this whole naval combat, back and forth slugfest, but how awkward was this KP? All the back and forth with the demo hits, uh, Poppy Pop beating his opponent to Castle Age and then almost getting his entire fleet nuked. Then Galliasus pop out. Just such a chaotic game here. And we have two more games to go, potentially. Such a messy affair as that went on as well, right? Like, you know, Order the Dragon, they aren't as heavily hampered by that first 15 minutes as HRE where the Arkin has nothing in range, but it's still a, a detail, right? Like, when you move out, all of a sudden, you actually haven't got the buff anymore. It puts you down to 28% instead of the 43%. So I think that's where you start to see it hurt a bit. But you know, I think the biggest, most critical element, we have to go back to that early game. That rack spim and investment. If you were to interview Anatan right now and ask him, what detail do you think costs you the game? One detail. Choose one. It is that detail. 310 resources. If he had that extra boat, think about how much tighter those, those early engagements are. And it doesn't end up as fishing, right? All of a sudden, you have a game where Order of the Dragon should have that economy we bragged about but I can't fault Poppy Poor Man. I don't know if that was the idea all along the mind games. If it was, the kid's a genius. It means he keeps it's, himself alive here. It's a huge one if you think about it, KP, because 
going for barracks and going for spearmen hurts a lot more for OOTD compared to any other civilization. So maybe this was like a semi-counter to the Order of the Dragon over here from Puppy Paw. But now we're heading to another map that features some water. Water Drake coming in here, and we're going to have the Japanese out there for Puppy Paw facing off against the Ayubids, which actually leaves Dry Arabia to be our last map should Puppy Paw win this game. It would be as standard as it gets, which is crazy to believe after such a chaotic set. If we go into game number five, it's going to be on the most standard map ever. There ain't nothing standard about these freaks. They'll give you something wild to witness. I mean, it's cool as well, actually, because Anatand, Abbasids, I think they actually work better than Ibids here because you can do trade. Uh, but this works better this way because Abbasids is his ace up his sleeve. Dry Arabia, Abbasids versus Roost. Abbasids actually have an edge there, surprisingly enough. Delhi versus Abbasids, you know, it's still a matchup that Delhi can quite often win, but I think Abbasids is one of the few sieves that has a sliver out involving 2TC play, even more so since the buff. So I think actually, you know, Camels could end the series here, but Camels could also, or Camel Sieve rather, could also be the ace up his sleeve to make it a 3 2 victory. I'm curious to see what Puppy wants to do with the Japanese here. It's tough in this particular matchup because the Coca Township doesn't work very well against Abbasid and Ibids because they can double dock for the same price as one. So we'll have to see what Puppy Paw's solution to that problem is because I've seen a few Japanese players tripping up already. We hop into Water Drake for game number four of this winning series to see who is going to qualify directly to the group stage and who's going to have to come back once more, oh, playoff stage rather, and who's going to have to come back once more in the group stage in an elimination series. Anatand still a match point. Puppy Paul, here to show you that Japan can win any type of water map. This series, KPU, is nothing short of impressive so far. A lot of chaos, a lot of madness, and most of that revolved around naval combat, something that you might have a lot of on this map as well. Puppy Paul is going to kick things off by dropping his own dock. Now, I think one of the key differences here, KP, uh, between this map and the one that we've seen in game number two is that here, despite having that amphibious terrain between the two players, you do have fish available. So going for a Dark Age dock and doing some fishing is, of course, an option. And smart opening play by Puppy Paw. Your immediate instinct, because you have Coca Township, is to ego chow the center of the map. You can't do that here. Iobids will get double docked to counter the Coca, but not just that. It's now that you're fishing, you've slowed your tech timing, and Iobids will always go advanced swimming. This is something that players switched onto early on with Mongolian Heights. They realized that Iobids actually were favored if they went for the cheaper, faster tech up. And if you click on it, you'll get your confirmation. It's already on the way. It does mean you don't have a stronger eco because no growth wing, but it gives you the opening boat advantage to suffocate the Japanese. Is this uh, the point where I highlight that I think Coco is still overrated and is a mistake to build in this game? Uh, I... I kind of agree with you, partly because Anatan could age up using uh, Desert Raiders. It's not your conventional way of playing Ayubids on a hybrid map if you go for a dock, but if you're afraid of the Koyuka Township, even a single Desert Raider with the bow is enough to essentially repel that unit. Yeah, I mean, like, you just don't want to get Desert Raider here. It's kind of a death sentence, right? It actually puts you behind in a weird way. So, like, you know, the, the problem I'm seeing here is. Every time I watch Coca Township so far, I think I've watched maybe eight games of Water Drake with Japanese, and only one of them did the Shinobi look useful. The rest of them, it was just kind of like, if you could go back now and choose, would you refund it? And I'm pretty sure every player in that situation would have said yes. So I think, have we got a double dock? Oh, that's kind of cool. Puppy Paws walling his eco in. I haven't seen someone try this before, but it's pretty smart. Yeah, this is something that's um, doable on this map because the map spawn here is quite predictable. You always have these little pockets at the very south and very north. Yeah. Interesting idea over here, although I don't think unless you wall in the whole thing, like this is going to protect you against initial ships. It's not going to um, protect you against land-based units. No, but it's also not quick enough. It's a doubt, yeah. right? Look at the timing on this. He needed to build this wall about 10 seconds earlier. Wait, uh, are, are we... it... where is oh, he running? No. <laughs> Kill I think me. he saw the ship. I think he saw the ship and he's just trying to save the villager, but this is so bad because now this is uh, an if... investment that goes down the drain. Okay, Anatan didn't get that follow-up shot, but now you can start idling out the fish. 
And Coca still isn't online. Even if it was, right, there could be a second ship waiting when you try to snipe that dock. I don't know. I'm telling you, this matchup is tricky. Like, I have it's... You know, I, I mean them for having no flexibility whatsoever on land maps. I stand by that. But advancement wing really is king when you get into these water hybrids. Yeah, it's going to be Coca downship here for Puppy Paw, though. He's not really rushing Feudal Age, by the way. Oh, He's only building it two villagers at this point, and... His own fishing eco is pretty much gone right now. Love the aggressiveness of Anathan over here. He also has his dock right next to the enemy um, shoreline. So he does have that forward presence. And uh, well, there goes the fishing eco from Puppy Paw as well. Yeah, and that was really smart. Anathan, he body blocked the retreat to Garrison there from the fishing boat. So he got a freebie. He could even do it again on this side if he just wrapped around right now. I think instead he's maybe a bit paranoid about the tech coming. I'm kind of surprised by Poppy Paul. Usually you see about eight villagers to build the Coco. He done it with five for most of that process and then finished with two. His timing is so off here. I, it just kind of backs up my point. Like Coco would have been hard to work in this game in the first place. Now it feels completely pointless. Yeah, that's the problem, right? And realistically, even if you shut down that dock right next to your base, Anathan can build a new dock back at home. It's actually very discounted for the Ayubids. So, really, you might get some value out of this Shinobi, but it's going to be very, very minimal. And at the same time, if you aren't making Shinobi, this landmark is basically useless. Yeah, it's like, when I mean, you think about it, it's 120 resource rebate on the tech up. And the argument is, well, that's better than, Cur that's better than going to the Cur Storehouse because I don't need it, I've got fish. Yeah, but you don't have fish in this game, right? So actually having those farms would have meant a lot more. And yeah, outpost play here by Puppy Paul is not going to work out. Anatan already has his number. With, with the Kura storehouse, the thing is that um, if you place it such that um, some of the farms are blocked by a tree line, you are going to get passive wood income, though, which is actually quite valuable on a hybrid map like this. Puppy Paul, I've been in the archer ship. I, I don't know if he can actually outmass now, right? Like, he's got... He's going to be pinned. I don't think he's going to be able to fish, so he can't mass boom there. I know he's at what? I think, is it two fishing boats now? Probably a third soon to be in the way. We have also got Aris that's coming in, so that should enable him to be a bit more greedy and focus eco. Uh, the nasty thing here, oh my lord, this is something that Anthony's going to do. He's using the scout to get the line of sight behind the tree line, <laughs> and that provides the line of sight that the Bogla needs to shoot at the villagers. Oh, that's so sad for Puppy Paw. He needs to run away from that wood line. Yeah, Puppy Paul's only way out now is Fast Castle. That's literally the only play you have in this game. Anything else is just a fail. So you know, there's two ways you go this. You go Fast Castle Stables, and then you just go straight for the enemy base. Or you go Fast Castle with a Siege Workshop Euro Zero Drop to build Spring Lance. He's dead. Adding another Shinobi. And then queuing up the demo. Sees value in it. Puppy Paul already has his now on the way. This is a bit ambitious of a dive, man. Yeah, you got to be cautious with that, Doc. But at the same time, Papipo does have a safe um, little pond for fishing here. Run! Run! Uh, That's going to be a bagler going down, I think. He should be close nope. enough. What? Nice little snipe with the Dow. Anathan feels like he needs to push this because Papipo still has some fishing eco out here. So as yeah, much as much. Uh, Papipo's fishing eco is confined in here, he does have fishing eco, and the ecos are neck and neck. Yeah, but you, you don't have to overcommit. Because remember, it's shoreline fish. It's going to run out. A nice knife there. I know. Gets the kill. Yeah, so that this is the problem. He has a total of 1,000 food here, right? And then nothing. Shinobi, that's better. I think this is an underrated play. Quite often, I see people just try to focus with... Wow. Distractions on both sides. Shinobi is going to find a villager on the flank also. So gold has now been idled out. Puppy Paw is definitely on his way to Castle Age. We can confirm that is definitely coming through. The question now is, does he try to address the water or just continue to focus land? I feel like you focus land here. Um, it's always dangerous to cross the server, but this one, compared to the one we've seen in game number two, it's a lot narrower. It's actually fairly quick to get through this um, whole water or amphibious area with a couple of mounted samurai very, very quickly. Now, of course, Playing Mounted Samurai into camels is normally not a great idea, but it's not like Anathan has a lot of camels out there and you would be looking at costly units versus feudal age units. He's scaling quite a few right now is the funny part in reaction to the Shinobi play. So I'm wondering this Puppy Pool... Yumi? 
the problem is the boats, right? Like, if it wasn't for the boats, Yumi would be the play here. But that does kind of pollute the play, right? Because you're going to have to run through their zone of influence. You could play on a Bugeisha here. Oh. It's like we're going to see damage here. Body block. Okay, that's <laughs> it. Poppy Paul just trying to keep him range for the extra arrow slit. Gets yep. the kill. That, that was a very smart thing. If he detonates that demo when the um, bug lies full HP, he doesn't get the kill. He could have gone for the low HP one, but he wanted, but he wanted to sync the one with a high HP. So he waited a little until the high HP bug law got damaged and then sunk it with a demo. It seems like a small thing, but that's the difference of efficiency that separates a good player from a great player. And it sounds like I'm done playing with that crap. I'm just going to wall you in. The, the interesting part as well is, you know, maybe, maybe I'm psychotic for this statement, but I kind of just wish the land units had that same level of body block issues in fights so that you could use it against them, right? Like you'd actually trap units like that. It is quite entertaining. It's definitely a high skill play. You can sort of do it. It's just not very reliable. Like we've seen people do it to push scouts closer to the attacking party before. Floating gate on the way for Poppy Paw here. So he's going to have the buff from the Yuri Shiro's. He can also start moving out for Wellix, although Anathan does have a couple of Desert Raiders out there. So he does have that land-based map control. And with these walls complete, if these walls complete, it's going to be difficult for Puppy Paw to leave his base. The question still is, what is Puppy Paw doing? Like, what is the play here? Is it going to be your atypical Mount Samurai spam? Or is he cooking different? Yeah, so it's Mount Samurai confirmed. Yeah, I like it. I think Mounted Samurai buffed by Yoroshiro. It's a very powerful combination. And it might feel awkward when you play against Camels, but again, those are very powerful units. And you still have a decent damage output even with the debuff. I feel like you just lose to, to the Deserators, though, with enough. Uh, it's, I, I don't know. I, I, mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird it's because the first hit is going to be removed anyways. You're yeah. a costly unit against a Fearless unit, but you do get a debuff from Camelot East. So it's like weird. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it's one of those uh, matchups where you don't want to engage a massive amount of Desert Traders. If Anathan had two of these, Puppy Paw would 100% fight them. So I actually like that Anathan committed very heavily into these because it makes these Mounted Samurai a lot uh, more underwhelming when you have so many camels to face off against. Yeah, and I think he's going to keep scaling. It's kind of intriguing, right? Because like, you know, it's, it's not just that. The deflective armor, it's small numbers. You just arch your shot to remove it and then switch melee and you're ready to go, right? Five armor. On top of that, you then got the 20% reduction on a very high base damage. Like, it's, it's kind of impressive just how well Desert Raiders can contest these mounted samurai from an age behind. Watch the trade out. Yeah, Shinto Priest is moving out for a relic, but this one does get sniped by Anathan. An ambitious idea coming from the lad. Ooh. Oh, but wait. But Anathan, I think that was a missed micro. Yeah, the villager. Yeah. I think he's trying to drive the villager and accidentally selected the archer ship there. It's still a very low HP Shinto Priest, though. And has Anathan to come has back. a bunch of. Um, he's got a bunch of Desert Raiders. Yeah, and he has to come back, right? Like, that's the other issue. He has to come back that way or go through the center of the map. Neither sounds very appealing. Yeah, the problem with this wall for Puppy Paw is that this limits his movement so, so much. On this map, that tree line that you spawn close to, it always spawns on the front of your TC. So with this wall complete, or if this wall completes, Puppy Paul can only leave his base to the east, which makes him very predictable. Desert Raid is showing up on that south side, so it looks like the Shinto. Yeah, he does get sniped out. No relics home yet. Mount Samurai numbers are about to reach equal point with the Desert Raid account, though. Also problem. And we do have trade, by the way. <laughs> we didn't talk about it, but the trade has been set up. I, it, wait, he didn't do maximum distance, though. Oh, surprising there. Uh, we have so much water trade in these games, KP, today. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's Anathan, man. Like, he, he, he's got this obsession. Like, if you pull the players playing Abbasas that go trade wing, I think he'd be the number one right now. Might as well do it with Ibids as well. Desiree is... Is he going hunting for Eco? I think so. Turn far is going to be able to defend. So the issue now is Poppy Paul's reacting to the center of the map, whereas Anatan is pivoting the script to be about the Eco on land. And I don't think there's any outposts on that gold. Demo in the meantime. Maximum value. Ooh, Poppy Paul's back.
not the fight you want. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of comical, not the right? fight that you want. And when you look at the numbers now, you have 11 mounted samurai against 14 desert traders. That's the kind of scale where mounted samurai will be happy to take these fights because. The concern that you have with Desert Raiders is that your base HP is very low compared to an ordinary Camel Rider. So these Mounted Samurai, even with the attack debuff, they can dispatch you fairly quickly. If you can find trades like this where he outnumbers, that's the benefit, right? That's what he's looking yes. for each time. And he's doing a good job of actually hunting that for the most, right? Like you're kind of seeing Puppy Paul has to overwhelm with his numbers each time to feel good about the trades. So it's leaving openings when he's trying to raid with one or two here or there. Nice clean up on the back, though. Yeah. Now dive. And, and the, just... one of the big differences between these two armies is that uh, Anathan Desert Raiders, they have limited damage potential on the enemy eco. These mounted samurai, they're a lot more dangerous to the enemy villagers. Yeah. You pull back towards TC, and that's the whole point, right? Like, no ranged armor, 120 base health. Like, it's not a recipe for success when it comes to hitting land eco. Outpost crawl now as well. Puppy pull. Oh, this is sick. He can actually deny the trade with this. Mounted Samurai count still at 12. Eco is still neck and neck, but Puppy Paw is in Castle Age, whereas uh, Anathan is still in Feudal. Is Anathan thinking like second TC? There's a lot of stone being held up to here. Yeah, th this must be a second TC. This is just enough for a second TC. Interesting choice here. I feel like his fishing eco is obviously fairly weak. Question is, oh, how it's going to run out, right? Like, that's, uh, that's the whole point with Shoreline Fish. It's not permanent. So it's like, yeah. at some point, you need a transition. Yeah, he, he spent a bunch of his wood. He could have dropped the TC like uh, yeah. 20 seconds ago, but he spent his uh, wood on a couple of more demos. But I expect him to eventually add a TC here. Or, I mean, he's still holding on to that stone, though. So that's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, it's like it's almost like he was going for emplacement plays, and then that fell apart. So he had to change gear a bit. I, I feel like he, if anything, he wanted to go to DCs and change his mind. Like, this is way too much stone for emplacement. Yeah, oh, God, that was a waste. Might be able to snipe the Shinto, but the dive is going to be expensive. Nice blocker there. Puppet Boy leaves one of the scroll ships around to guarantee the Shinto gets through with the first relic. It's crazy, Anathan actually. Stone... Yeah, like, Anathan if... went back to stone, by the way. Yeah, it's like he's now up to 420 stone. But the, the crazy thing, I think he just left the villager on there, maybe by accident at this point. Cause it's wild as well, because if you think about recalibrating your economy, you'd be close to Castle Age if it wasn't for all this stone and wood that you're flowing. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Like, maybe he wanted a second DC, then changed his mind. Whichever the case, that's way too much stone for uh, for just emplacements. Desert Raid numbers have now been eclipsed. The Mount Samurai have the favorable count, but not the favorable engagement. Anatan sucks everything home to contest this raid. That's a lot of those uh, mounted samurai are heavily damaged, so this is a little misleading. I think half of Puppy Paw's army is barely at like 20% HP. If Anno just switches the range as well, he could snipe a few of these. That's true. I guess he wants to be able to instantly react if they ever slow down, right? Whereas if you go ranged attack, you're going to get further and further away. <laughs> yeah, but sprint placements on the wood line for Puppy Paw just sniping over there. I know. I, if Anathan gets up to Castle Age, yeah. I like his position a lot more. He's up That's by before. 10 eco already. And seriously, he could drop a second DC at this point, use up that stone for something. Yeah, it's just a shame with Advancement Wing. I think the logistics heal here would be disgusting with Mass Desert Raiders against Samurai. Let's go to this Mount Samurai. The ships are able to just contest him. Like, it's kind of crazy, right? There's not many boats left, but there's enough to kind of spook him. Long Wall now coming up on the north side from, Puppy, uh, from Anathan. Uh, same thing, or same principle as we had on the south. That front wood line provides a lot of protection to your base. If you wall off that northern flank, you can kind of funnel Puppy Paw's units towards the middle of the map. I don't have slow reactions there, though. Oh, wall up. Puppy Paw just still trying to deny the little trade that's going on. Kind of crazy just how many free kills you could get at the tail end with this range switch. Because the Raiders are going to outnumber yeah. over here, and it looks like Puppy Paw lost track of what the Mountain Samurai were doing. Yeah, he wasn't really punished for beating up all the fishing ships, so I just, I guess he just left them there. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, the tricky thing is that maybe those uh, Samurai were being shot at by a Dao, so he gets the attack notification. But at the same time, he doesn't realize that it's not only a Dao shooting at them now, but also Desert Raiders. 
And one of the things that's concerning for Puppy Paw here is that um, the trades aren't really good for him. When you look at the destroyed value at the bottom left, he's taking very inefficient engagements and Anathan just like Castle Oh boy. And, and this is big, right? The Desert Raiders, they're already winning fights. What happens with Castle Age Tech? Add another detail into it. Look at what Puppy Paw's doing on the map. Before the Desert Raiders, we said they can't eco trade because they can't dive the base. Where's Puppy Paw's economy now? It's not at home, it's on the east flank. Oh, the archer ship as well. Oh, the demo. Too. Wait. Okay, couple of things about this. So apparently the demo's hit, the demo's blast does not count against the no, repulsive be armor. Because remember, deflective armor, it, it, like you, if you hover on it, it'll tell you the type of damages it deals with. It doesn't deal with siege damage because siege damage is unblockable. And demos deal with uh. siege damage. It's really weird. Same with mangoes, actually. Yeah, it, to yes, be honest, it would be very OP if it survived the blast like if that. If you hover the deflective damage. vodka, the little deflective icon, the little blue icon, there you go. So melee or range, it specifies, that's why. So like, if you shoot them with culverins as well, they still have deflective. Which kind of upsets yeah. me, because if you think about the lore of that, just imagine the badassery of a samurai deflecting a cannonball. Uh, side note here though, Arrow attacks do take out your deflective armor. So even these Daos shooting at these mounted samurai, mm -hmm. they are just good enough to take out that armor. I know. Pack up should almost be complete, right? So yep. much resource in reserve as well. This is kind of wild to think about. Anathan is playing with fire near those docks, though. What is he going His for? desert raiders will get obliterated by demos. Yeah, but what is the switch here? This is kind of wild. He's holding onto all these resources. You'd think it's more desert raiders, but... Look at the Pass resource them. bank. <laughs> what? Adabeg's Desert Raiders? Let's do it. I don't know. Demos. Ooh, I know. He needs to be could careful. Be nasty. Yeah, base HP is low, right? <laughs> he starts nice to rage attack it. <laughs> and back into the action. <laughs> I love the pause yeah. moments like, shoot. Okay, back to stabbing. <laughs> this is why these Desert Raiders will be the backbone of his army. Like, what else does he need? Okay, it's legit Camel Lancers. He is just going to play the normie. Of course, we are going to be upgrading those Desert Raiders. I find when you have 17 of them, it's kind of worth it. What a wild game. Oh my. Oh, this is bad, actually. He's switching Ona Begisha, which don't fare well against Desert Raiders and definitely won't fare better against Camel Lancers. Demos, not able to get in again. The Central Island is just griefing him. He does at least get rid of the Springhold. But this is a losing battle over time, surely. Yeah. Wait. He what what he just doesn't happened? have veterans yet. Those desert raiders melted. Yeah. Oh. There was an arrow ship behind. And remember, these are costly units for Puppy Paw. I also think the flag. That's it? What? I can't believe that. The desert raider count went from 20 to 8 in an instant there. And Puppy Paw is able to pull it back to get us five games deep. Here's the thing, KP. I think... Those um, those samurai had their deflective armor, and I think in most of the previous fights, because of all the chaos and arrow ships shooting at those samurai, they didn't have their deflective armor. So maybe those previous battles were skewed, and this one was the quote unquote realistic battle. Still, it's it's costly units versus feudalized units, and I think that was uh, part of the reason why Anathan ended up losing that battle. But right after that, he taps out, and we're taken into a fifth game here, Papi Paw looking to launch a reverse sweep here. Wild end there. You know, it makes you wonder, is this something Anthan could have done? Could he give him a little bit more time over? Maybe got a dervish start to heal? Because I imagine those Desert Raiders health bars were not looking pretty. We didn't quite see it in that fight at the end. But, you know, now we get into the fifth game and I am losing my mind here. Later. The play is meant to be Bassets, right? Bassets have a really good shot against Roos. We've actually seen that. We even saw Marine Lord show us how you execute that against Louis MT yesterday. But Anatan has to do something different, doesn't he? We've got Ottomans instead. To be fair, Ottomans are a juggernaut on Dry Arabia as well. And Anathan also likes Chaos, so we could see some early aggression shenanigans from him as well. I personally like uh, the Ottomans um, in Anathan's hands over the Abbasids against the Rus, but there's a reason why the Rus are banned in many, many series, KP. Rus are just such a juggernaut yeah. and a versatile civilization. Alternative would have been Delhi for Puppy Paul, which I think has a reasonable matchup against those civs as well. But he was given an opportunity to play with Roos, and he used that opportunity. Um, just a side note here, KP, part of the reason why he's able to play Roos is because Anathan went super heavy on banning Chinese and Jushi 
given how many hybrid and water-based maps we had in this series. Yeah, so I mean, you have to like ban the, the Chinese in this situation. The flexi they have, they're really good on Hill and Dale, Archipelago. I think there's even a, a viability behind them on the map like Water Drake. So I don't really blame him for that. Uh, the, the interesting thought here, though, is like Otto's versus Roost. Like, what? I think this is the new trade build. So you go for the trade landmark and then you play 2TC out to the deer. That should, in theory, work as long as Puppy 4 doesn't go for a night opening. So what you're probably going to see, and you'll be able to tell very early, is Anatan should be skipping the military school just to get the TC faster. That moment in the game is very telling because if he does skip the military school, I like his chances more. If he chooses to commit, though, this starts to get a bit more Roost favored. Hmm. Well, we just have 30 seconds left to go, KP. This is the decider game in a winner's match here at the Masters of Realms. The winner is going to play the quarterfinals next Sunday. The loser of this series is going to have to play a decider game. And, you know, KP, we talked about this uh, before the event started. This is a very tightly contested group. As things stand, the winner, or uh, I should say the loser of this series, he's going to have to face off against Vortex, and that's not going to be an easy matchup no matter what. No, uh, the, the question mark there is going to be, did Vortex learn from his last encounter of Anatan if that occurs again? We need to get through this one first, though. It comes down to this, a final game in this best of five to see who will make it through to the playoff straight away and who will have to play one more series. Poppy Paul on the dominant roofs, Anatan. Looking for that curveball, though. We've got an Ottoman pick to try and decide this. And I think one of the common denominators between the games we've seen between these two in this series was Anathan going for chaos. Every single game he went for something that kind of threw Puppy Paw off in early game. Sometimes Puppy Paw was able to rebound, sometimes not. But Anathan was playing anything but conventional, and I'm expecting him to do that here in game number five as well. I'm just looking at the spawn right now to see what the options are in the opening. Um... The deer, you could play a TC out there. It's actually quite a nice flow because you play onto the stone and then you drop the TC afterwards. That would involve a wood opening. It's just a bit more dangerous that way because Puppy Paw could just choose to open stables depending on the bounty hall. So we have to keep a big eye on that. Um, usually your goal here is to achieve wheelbarrow plus tech up at 400 food parity. Uh, if you get more, if you actually get enough for a first night, it proves to really punish these two TC players. I wonder, was, was Anatan's thought process here this, that this will go imp? Because that's an intriguing thought, right? Like maybe he thought that this would contest Roost Siege better. I mean, it is great bombards versus banded arms shutter triggers though, right? Can't be about imp. Well, it looked like the scouting patterns at the very beginning were also extremely similar. So there was a bit of a race for the sheep in here. I'm not sure how many Anathan was able to secure, but one thing is sure, most of the bounty seems to be falling into the hands of Puppy Paw. He has most of this deer pack. He aggroed quite a few wolves on the right side. So bounty should be looking pretty sharp for him. He actually might get blocked pretty hard here. This is not as good as you'd think. Look at his gold situation. Look at Wheelbarrow already in the way, right? So clear up the wolf, I'll be, but he's still going to be short by the time he has food, if he gets cut on the deer here. Yeah, it's that's the tricky spot up. with the Roos. Um, you have to decide if you go for Wheelbarrow or not, and uh, if you don't, or if you go for Wheelbarrow, but you fall short on your expectations in terms of the bounty, you could be in trouble. He's still missing uh, 35, so that's a wolf and a deer. Yeah, he's gonna have enough. Yeah, no, he's actually suboptimal. Look at it right now. Uh, the, 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 this is usually where you nope. kind of bite the bullet and, and like cancel Wheelbarrow, so. Not 100% ideal, but he'll still be able to get it up. Kremlin coming in on the gold and the wood. And we have indeed got the Sultani trade network coming. He was uh, he was a couple of seconds behind, I believe, because yeah. he was lacking like 10 gold. But to be fair, I don't think um, a couple of seconds delay justifies canceling Wheelbarrow here. It's, it was a little bit dicey there, because I don't know. I, I wonder, I imagine Pipepo did. I don't know if he was tracking the tick point for Hunting Cabin there, because like that was the thing. He lucked out with that. Well, not lucked out, but he knew that was coming because he was actually really far away. That could have easily been like an extra 15, 20 seconds wait, right? Which is pretty painful in this matchup, especially if you know it's 2TC. And we can see by the fact Anatan is on stone already, this is a 2TC build. 
I like it quite a bit. I feel like Ottoman 2TC builds are very underrated because uh, when you look at the Ottomans, they like to play that mid-late game and just start flooding units out of the military scores, uh, the Imperial Armory as well. When you, you do two TCs, you actually have a very powerful economy to back that up and you can easily um, support that push of units coming out of the military schools with a massive flood coming out of your own resource bank. Mm. I imagine like, there's two options here, right? Like, Anatan can play condensed TC, but this isn't enough gold from Papa Paul to get the night opening. So he should feel very confident to play the TC out into the far deer on the south side. And these traders won't be actively trading, by the way. They just sit here and they trickle gold. That's the whole purpose. It's, it's a nice little boost. It's really good, actually. Like, it's 72 gold a minute. So it's, it, if you think about it that way, it's Mansa Quarry, which is kind of bonkers. And it's a Mansa Quarry that you can kind of scale if you really want to invest. But the thing I really like about this, I think people overrate the value of Madrissa because ever since Anatolian Hills came back in the meta, that's 2,000 more safe food you have. Madrissa was required before because you didn't have that extra boon of resources. And when you play two TCs, your goal is to expand towards a second source of food anyways. That's where you place your second town center at. So I think part of the equation here for Anathan is that he's going to expand towards additional food anyways. So it's not as vital for him to have those extra berries on his landmark. This guy's just being a little bit annoying for the time being, but it doesn't really matter. You're never going to stop him before he gets enough stone. The way he's pulling back though, I'm a bit surprised. This is going to be a TC drop on the tree line. Uh, maybe on the berries to oh, the north. Oh, look what's happening. Puppy Paw, he delayed his TC. He went for the night. That's that's really cool. Yeah. I'm not even sure if he wanted to play two TCs in the first place. I feel like his him sending villagers to the stone coincided with him actually getting a visual confirmation of Anathan mining stone. But maybe two TC was the plan all along. One thing is sure, and that's concerning for Anathan here. He is playing very tight, and he doesn't have a lot of food to work with because of how close this initial TC is to the original one. He at least stops 360 rotation with that TC placement, right? Because now when the knights walk by, they'll get clipped by the TC. And the knight is going to be too late to actually do any real damage. So in a way, like the puppy port, he benefits in that he forced a defensive TC, but he loses out in that this knight doesn't get to kill anything. I, I honestly feel like this is good value for puppy pop. His own TC is only... 20, 30 seconds or so late. But compared to the placement of Anathans, he's got a very, very optimal spot. He's going to be on the hunt. I think he wanted to go out on the boar and that deer pack to the west. But he saw the scout and he realized that his opponent would just block it anyways. Still, this is a really good spot. I much prefer this DC placement from Puppy Paul compared to what we have from Anathan. That's the nature of the Roost matchup, right? Like This is why the stables opening is so popular. And it's crazy to think like this isn't even it optimal. Imagine this if Puppy Paul just had that gold sliver without having a mining camp, right? Which does happen sometimes. Like That's what makes Roost so oppressive with these GTC type builds. But now with this in mind, like Anatan, you know, he's got enough food here, right? Like he should be able to easily pull the Anatolian Hills, which I think he's already done by the looks of it. That will get him what he needs to castle. That's at least the upside is he should be capable of reaching castle much quicker than Puppy Paw. Yeah, that's dangerous because um, let's not forget, once you get to Castle Age, you can start going for the relics over there. Of course, you face one knight, but that's not really a concern. You can just go for your own Lancers as well. I'm actually curious what landmark he's going to age up with. Um, I'm thinking Armory here, but it's armory. he's... Yeah, he, he's, Trust me. he's not going to have an immediate use to those siege weapons, right? So he's going to have uh, an armory producing siege weapons that will be unused. They're, they're pretty good, actually, right? Because, like, what's the comp for Roos and Castle? Archers or horse archers with knights. So you have Janissaries and Mangos. Like, it, it's always good to get free siege. Like, that that whole landmark issue, it, it's one of the most skewed ones that exists in Age of Empires 4. I don't remember the last pro game I saw where it was in MIA. I love this push from Puppy Paw, though. He's blocking his opponent's gold quite a bit here. He managed to kill two villagers, and he's actually willing to sacrifice the knight and the scout just to make sure that he blocks out Anathan's gold access. Yeah, it at least resets things and keeps them closer. But, like, Anatan does still have a substantial lead. Papa is going to queue up another Knight. I don't think that one is going to be quick enough here before Anno starts attack. Yeah, it's, it, it's cool. a tricky thing because uh, Anathan was a little quicker to a lot of things, partly because he did not invest into the stable and Knight. At the same time, Papi Paul, when you look at those resource bank, he's not that much behind, especially considering that he is taking uh, Deer compared to Anathan, who is using sheep.
we, you can see how far he's going to be behind by the fact he's walling like this, right? Like, that's quite the concession to make. Usually, Roos can be more confident because they reach the tech so quickly and then they race for relics, right? I think the issue here is Poppy Paul needs to be careful not to lose that initial knight. Otherwise, Imam points is a possibility, right? Like, with this initial surge, within a minute of being teched, Anatan should have an extra Vizier point for that play. And there you go. Mehmed Imperial on the way because we will never ever see another landmark until Ottomans get a drastic overwork. Yeah, Poppy Paul is only a couple of seconds behind aging, though. High trade house. There's nothing insane here. he will just be probably on the second TC because he's got Stealth Forest on the tree line as well. Wait, really? Yeah. He places it on the east side. I would have expected west side for Puppy Paul on his tree line for the high trade house because it's like straggler trees, right? Yeah, maybe he doesn't care much about the extra gold there and he prefers to have uh, the food source, the deer pack spawning in a safe spot behind his TC. Get your numbers in, folks. It was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Puppy Paw got, I want to say it was about 210 bounty. Maybe 220. Okay. 225. Damn, I'm close. Yeah, it, it, it felt weak, right? Like, he had to go gold mining. So, it's not going to be an immediately ridiculous number. But, obviously, he's close to the scale point. He just needs three deers to spawn. So, three minutes in, it will inflate. So, Monastery drop on the way. Does Puppy Paw go for the double money? This has been growing in popularity, but it's kind of tough with Roost because of how expensive those monks are. I, I wouldn't do that because he's got map control. Um, Anathan has a Lancer coming out, and I feel like this is not a five relic game, probably not even a four relic game for Puppy Paw. But when you look at how the relics actually spawned, mm -hmm. he should have an easy time picking up three relics over here. I um, he's actually investing into true. spears here. Yeah, like the problem right now is he's behind on knights. So, like, the. The problem is it's an Imam pull and you're outnumbered, right? And outclassed. You haven't even upgraded your knights yet. So I think it's very difficult for him to get the majority of relics on the south side. Yeah, that, that's the other, other reason why two monasteries feels excessive over here. Volo popping out. Ear needs to pull the knight back. It's a yeah, very and now he's backed up knight. I don't think he can go back in here. Like, the lance charge won't kill quick enough before the knight would die. So nice timing there by Anantan. He's also moving for the fast south relic here. And he's got knights now cycling towards that second TC. Yeah, at this point, I wonder if Puppy Paw should try to join the Rolic on the very northern side because Anathan is definitely focusing on this southern area, just trying to take away the Rolics that are close to his opponent's base. Puppy Paw does have one Relic behind his walls that's safe. He wants at least one more, but but preferably two more, to be honest, when you have Warrior Monks. Well, we're coming now. Is at least going to reset. So it does at least snatch one of these away, but it's starting to look like a 3 2 Relic split. There's only so much the Spearman can do. In fact, that. Honk might not be getting away with that relic considering it's double knight. Well, actually, right now the spearmen aren't even reacting to this. I mean, it makes sense, right? You're outnumbered here. They are feudal spears. So, really good opening here for Anno. You know, remember, he is on 2TC. He's not going to be eclipsed in that regard. Yeah, knights. One, I think one of the big difference makers between these two players right now is that Anathan's knight production is a lot more rapid. And that's part of the reason why uh, he's got all this map control. He is bringing in two relics. But it looks like Puppy Paw is going to have to settle with two himself. He's bringing back one more. Puppy Paw, this is not a good fight for him right now. Yeah, he's getting out microed. Mobility advantage and tech difference, right? These are still only Feudal Age Spears. Yeah, the Knights at least are Castle Age for Puppy Paw. And a lot of those units for Anathan are banked up. But. At the very least, Anathan is going to secure the majority of the relics here, it seems. Puppy Paw has one, and he's going to garrison the one to the north soon. Anathan, he's going to have three, which I think he has to be happy with. When you age at the same time as the Roos does, and the Roos have the higher mobility warrior monks, you're happy if you have the relic advantage. Yeah, this is like interesting because I think Ottomans get slept on for this particular build. You mentioned it a little bit there, the night timing. Remember, blacksmiths buff all production. It's not just military schools. Like, if you actually go and look at the stables, he should have a blacksmith on them right now, right? And you'll see the difference. It's normally 35 seconds to wait to produce a knight. I think at this stage, if I'm not mistaken, it puts you down to, is it 26 with the Ottomans? No, don't care about Roost. The, the Otto stables. I think it's 26. 
27. Okay, yeah, one off. So that is quicker, by the way, than French with School of Cavalry. Papipo is going very heavily into Spears over here. He's getting veterancy right now, adding in crossbows as well. He is fully walled back at home, so he can afford to go for a more uh, slow-paced unit composition over here. But Hello. he's just going to miss out on this relic. At least there is some silver lining here. He's going to get a couple of villager picks on the berries. Slow the slow on the rats from Manitan. We'll at least get a few back home safely. He did pull the relic though, right? That's the bigger detail here. Oh wait, is that an overchop? Oh, <laughs> nope. Been there a million times. Never again. But crossbow switch coming. I, I wonder, does Anno just start prepping? I don't think you just mass Janissary straight away, right? Like, it's not mass knight, so... Uh, I guess you just crossbow yourself. Because you're going to have mango support. Like, this is the tough part. Like, Rusa kings of the imp siege. Ottomans, you'd think they'd be kings of imp siege as well, but I feel like they're kings of feudal, uh, castle rather siege in this game, due to the MIA. I, I like heavy crossbows here for Anathan. Uh, the only thing that Papi Paul has right now against Manganols are the Knights. And you already have two Manganols out for Anathan. Let's not forget about that. He had those being produced in the armory for quite some time. So he's soon going to show up with a bunch of Manganols. And all he needs to have is troops that will protect those Manganols. I know. Getting a little bit overzealous with the Knight Raids here. He's at least keeping Papi Paul away from his base. Walls are coming up. So like both players essentially encapsulate themselves. I know. Whoa. He's actually just going for it. I does he want to throw the knights away for a transition? Just trying to get value, I guess? I think I... he's realizing that Poppy Paw is desperate for food. Poppy Paw has so many villagers out here, and he's got more coming in. He's got like 30 or so villas out here. And I think Anathan is just trying to punish Poppy Paw for expanding towards that source of food. At the same time, Anathan himself is struggling for food. He only has 500 per minute right now. Is this mango a meme to you? Like, what's going on right now? Wait, is he about to lose two man? Please don't. <laughs> Billy did yeah. at least here, so it should only be There's one. There's no but... way he should lose the second one. Yeah, that was a weird freebie given over by Anatan, though. Yep, French is being dug over here. Love how the Imams are being used to heal up those low HP Lancers. Good value there for Anatan. Yeah, and the Spearmen reluctant to commit when they know there's a second wave coming. And it looks like we have finally got Janissaries being queued up. Interesting choice. It would have made sense against Mass Knights, but... I actually think this favors Poppy Paw, right? Crossbows, they will get the bonus damage up against the Jannies. It depends on the Mangonals, though. So it's going to come down to those Springle numbers, potentially, for Poppy Paw. He's going heavy into Springles, which makes me like his composition a lot more. If, if you take out those Mangonals, Anathan's forces will struggle so badly against Spear and Crossbow. Where does Anna go from here? I need more Crossbows, more Jannies. I mean, in theory, the Janissaries can win you the fight, but it does require Puppy Paw being quite ignorant of them. Yeah, no Springholds will be needed in this fight. You have uh, only one Mangonel out there for Anathan, so giving away the freebie hurts a lot. You lost the majority of the Mangonels. I think he lost two Mangonels in total in this game, so he doesn't really have an overwhelming amount of siege that can take out that massive clump of infantry that Puppy Paw has. Farm transition not really fully complete either. So it's not like Anatan can just go meat shield, which is what worries me a bit. Like if you look at his comp versus Puppy Paw, Puppy Paw already has the meat shield online, right? So like he can mm -hmm. kind of stand in these fights a lot more. Maybe the better play here is to lean into the Springle play and try and outnumber. Because you do have potentially siege crews coming down the line. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking about as well. If you have the um, Springhold advantage, you can at least keep your Mangonels alive to a certain extent. And that could help a lot repulsing the massive group of Spearmen and Crossbows. But this is not a matchup that Anathan wants to fight. Janissary starts to stand their ground. Base with one or two Spears. Mango shots will push it back. But Springhold is going to be able to trade that out. So Siege removed for Anathan. Hasn't really got any way he can retreat, though. He has to kind of stand his ground here. Uh, a matter gets sniped instantly. That was such a good kill by Poppy Paul. Tanny's crossbow is fully exposed, so it's going to be a retreat. That was my worry, right? As you saw Anatan, he's trying to make this hard choice of sending the crossbows in first, but I wonder if that was what Poppy Paul's mindset was on, because he did start to queue up men at arms. Seems he's changed his mind, though. Says, wow, spears plus crossbows, kind of OP. You know, Anathan's going very heavy on Janissaries. He's up to 14, but this previous fight was really, really good for Puppy Paw, despite not having a lot of blacksmith upgrades. Those are very much lacking for him. Compare that to Anathan, who's slowly been getting uh, blacksmith upgrades. He's got quite a few costly upgrades now as well. 
Yeah, I'm just. I, I think the issue with Anatan is he has no ability to stand there in these fights, right? Like he's still leaning knights, mm -hmm. and knights have like they could not be more hard countered right now, right? It's crossbow spears. Maybe spearman is the weird way out for Anatan here. Uh, perhaps. Although Puppy Paw is already mixing in men at arms, so I don't know how well that was going to work. Mm. Well, the bigger thing is that now Anathan is confined to his base, and Puppy Paw is capturing Sacred Sites, and he's fortifying the one in the middle as well. So momentum shifted quite a bit in a sense that um, Anathan is no longer the aggressor. Puppy Paw has most of the map under his control. He actually has the better unit composition, and his eco is difficult to pressure because he already has all the wars completed. I wonder. I know. I still think the Spears is probably his best way out. Night Raid looks good, though. Yeah, there we nice. go. Oh, Puppy didn't make a gate here. Oh, weirdly enough, Anatan breaks away earlier than he needs to. If he's recharging, I think it's a cycle. He's also distracted as Puppy Boy is trying to push into the main. Night still raiding. Such a long way to go to get the safety. So, I don't know, now with an 11 villager lead. Uh, that's, that's pretty substantial, especially when you consider that he also has the free production from the military schools. But look at that tower creep coming up here for Puppy Paul. Multiple wooden fortresses being placed, and this tower is going to get burnt down just when the emplacement finishes. No villagers pulled to repair this, so this should burn down. Jenny's have to stand their ground. Tap speed's pretty ludicrous, but is it going to be good enough? Puppy Paul, 39 crossbows. Remember, these guys get bonus damage up against those Janissaries. Mango's now Mango. starting to arrive. I, I just don't know how Anatan is meant to hold this right now. A yeah, surprise Anathan doesn't have anti-siege. Anathan doesn't have a single spring gold, so he's being held hostage by that mangonel. That's getting deeper. Anno getting an uncomfortable feeling about a reverse sweep on the way here. Mango hit big. Janice having to bite back, but remember they have less range than the crossbows. And they're walking actively into the mango. Oh, the matter on the front line once again. It's going to get I sniped, think. and there goes the attack buff. Second matter comes in once again, being positioned yes. on the front line, KP. I, I think he's just dead here. Look at the count right now. Military is all gone. Anatan, there's no way. I can't believe it. Puppy Paul pulls it all the way back with a reverse sweep. Anatan will have to come again in the group stage to make it for those playoffs. You preface this series by saying that this is probably one of the most anticipated series of the group stage. Two players that were undefeated at, at least last weekend. 3-0 wins for both of them. And now we come in, Anathan comes in, 2-0 lead for him. Puppy Paw pulls a reverse sweep on him. And Puppy Paw is going to be the one who goes into the quarterfinals directly. Anathan is going to have to play against Vortex next week to secure his spot in the playoffs. Absolutely wild as well. It wasn't just a case of like, oh, he outdrafted. Oh, well, this went right. That went. That pivotal game three is the one I think most people are going to remember from this series more than anything else. The bait play that gave him the edge on the French. I don't think anyone would have anticipated Archipelago being a French dub going into the Master Realms whatsoever. But Poppy Port is built different. So Canadian now qualified. But we now need to discover if there's going to be two Canadians qualifying this weekend.